The final home game of the year for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Live from Lincoln, Nebraska, College Football on Versus presents the Wildcats of Kansas State visiting the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Hello again, everybody. Along with Kelly Stopper, I'm Ron Thulin. After giving up a school record 76 points in their fifth consecutive loss last week, Kelly, you might imagine it was a difficult week for not only the coaches and the players, but the fans. You grew up in Nebraska. You live in Nebraska. Give us some perspective on this past week. Well, being born and raised here, I understand the importance of this program, and they want to get it straightened out very quickly. They don't exactly know what's going on. They want to answer two questions. How did we get in this position, and what do we do to correct it. They've been calmed a little bit because of Dr. Tom Osborne coming back into the picture. Now it's where do we find the answers? Well, the reality is if Nebraska can win out, they would become bowl eligible. Now that's a big if. To do that in our John Hancock player profile, this guy's got to step up. Yeah, Joe Gans is the leader of the, the ship at this point in time. He's not overly talented. He has a decent arm, but he knows the offense. He makes great decisions, and he's kind of a throwback to, to what the Nebraska people want to see. A guy that has worked his way up, worked hard, and now he gets his opportunity to play. Well, for Kansas State, since beating Texas, they have alternated wins and losses. Now, they would like to become bowl eligible with a victory today. If they do, it'll be on the shoulders of that Freeman Nelson Express. Yeah, we saw this Express last week, and they're very talented. Individually, they're very good. Collectively, they're absolutely dynamic. And you can see, look down at the touchdowns that Josh Freeman has thrown. Eight of them out of the 12 have gone to Jordy Nelson. Freeman loves Jordy Nelson. He will look to him in every circumstance in the game today. Well, Freeman almost came to Nebraska, but Jordy Nelson is glad he didn't. Will they be enough to overcome senior day in Lincoln, Nebraska? We'll find out. Starting lineups, opening kicks straight ahead. Big 12 football on Versus is brought to you by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And by Keystone Light. You can't always be smooth, but your beer should be. Bill Callahan hugging his seniors as they're being introduced. Bo Rue, his father played here, his brother played here. He will get a huge round of applause. He's coming back and from an injury, and he will be able to play today. Welcome back. These two teams have split the last 10 meetings between each, each other. Nebraska, however, has won the last two. And as we mentioned just a couple of moments ago, Josh Freeman almost came to Nebraska. With more on that story and an update, here's Lewis Johnson. Well, Ron, when we were out here earlier during the warm-ups, uh, some of these Nebraska fans let Josh Freeman know that they remember they had made the verbal commitment to come to Nebraska and then ultimately changed his mind to sign with K-State. And when I talked to Freeman during those warm-ups, I said, what happened? He said, look, it's as simple as this. I made a connection with Ron Prince, the man who is now in charge of the K-State program. I made a connection with him, decided to sign, and that's the end of the story for him. But really, the next chapter in the story is, as his development as a K-State quarterback continues is how this young man will handle this, this environment here with all these fans who remember that he wanted to come here and change his mind. Ron Prince says that the young man is still developing. He's learning a lot about game management. He trusts him to make all the throws that they need to make, and they make a lot of throws in this offense, and he ultimately believes that this young man will continue to improve. Prince says that, listen, every team in college football has flaws like we do. This is a game where you have to manage your flaws. Prince hopes to have a chance to jump on this crowd early, drop some points to try and quiet this crowd. Good luck with that because they're still packed no matter, no matter what the record is. But despite the mistakes, despite the errors, he's hoping that the K-State offense can move forward, get this crowd quiet, play within themselves, play within the white lines, as he likes to say. And if you do that, you can beat any team on any Saturday. Ron? Great job, Lewis. We'll be checking with you throughout the ball game. There's 38-year-old Ron Prince, a native of Junction City, Kansas. That's where he grew up. He says, I've got a sense of what it is to be Kansas State and what the fans are hoping for and wanting. He said, don't use the term replace as far as replacing Bill Snyder, who's actually in the uh, stands today. He said, I'm not replacing. I just want to make sure I continue what Bill Snyder has done. Let's take a look at our Under Armour Advantage. Take a look at the keys to the game today. Nebraska must find a reason to play with passion. Joe Gans alluded to that at the top. Kansas State must overcome this hostile environment. It is still that regardless of the atmosphere in Lincoln. And then Kansas State needs to take advantage of that Nebraska rush defense. They have to prove that Nebraska has made some adjustments, found some answers. Kansas State doesn't like to run the football, Ron. 
And we saw that firsthand last week. The Kansas State says that, and Brian Prince telling us that they have not run the football with authority. They want him to do that. Kansas State won the toss. They have elected to receive. This is going to be Justin McKinney, the quarterback. They fumbled the first kickoff last week. This time McKinney is stopped. He almost got ripped at the 15-yard line. So Nars is the one who made the first hit. Kansas State offense, Josh Freeman. Here are some numbers on him. Four losses, five touchdowns, seven interceptions. Five wins, seven TDs, three interceptions. Rob Prince says he's still in the learning process, Kelly. And you can tell that in the quarterback position is about decision making. And right now, Josh Freeman at times will get locked onto Jordy Nelson and that translates to bad decisions. We'll see how that plays out this afternoon. We'll go with a split backfield. The crowd is extremely loud. First pass of the ball game. Freeman looking. Pass complete up to the 24-yard line. Not much going on. Let's take a look at the skill position for Kansas State. Along with Jordy Nelson, you've got to keep an eye on Deion Murphy. He is number 87. He is outstanding. He has a game breaker. And on the line, Veers is going to get the start at center. But they do get some good news. Jordan Bedore, their best blocker, who has been out the last couple of weeks, last three weeks, he is going to be able to play today. Pick up a five on the play. Three wide receivers set, two to the right. Nebraska looks like they're going to show blitz. They back off. The run game, nothing doing. Been the Achilles heel of this Nebraska defense all year. They are 118th in defense on the, against the rush. The defensive line, a musket pressure on Freeman. Potter and Turner are the key. Linebacker Steve Octavian leads the team in tackles. Good news, Bo Root is back. Secondary has only three interceptions. Courtney Grixby has two of those. Third down, we'll call it five. Nebraska, six in the box. They rush four. Freeman looking deep down the sideline. Passes incomplete. Intended for Daniel Gonzalez, who we saw get hurt in last week's ball game. Larry Asante on the coverage. Good three and out for this Nebraska defense. And a three and out that's desperately needed by this Nebraska defense. Freeman not going to Jordy Nelson on third down. He goes outside to Gonzalez. Very good coverage by Courtney Grigsby right at the end. Actually, it was number 14, Anthony Blue, but very good coverage looking for the ball when the ball's in the neighborhood. Tim Rayer, the number one punter in the Big 12, shanks it off the side of his foot. Did not give Courtney Grigsby a chance to return it. So looks like Nebraska is going to get good field position after a punt that carried just 31 yards. Well, the Nebraska offense, don't forget they hung 39 on a pretty good Kansas defense last week. Joe Gans has what teammates call a Chicago attitude, which means he doesn't back down. Yeah, this program needs an attitude right now, and a good attitude. It's character for this young man, and that's what you're going to see the way he plays. He competes absolutely every play. Marvin Lucky, the lone setback, and he has the football. He's had an outstanding year, gets up over the... 35-yard line to the 36, rolling on the tackle. The skill position, Marlon Lucky, as we mentioned, great year, over 1,300 yards running the football and catching the football. He is a game-breaker. And on the line, the bell cow is Brett Byford. He is on the Remington watch list. Second down, only a pickup of one on that play. We'll call it nine. Gales will go from the shotgun. Three wide receivers to the right. His first pass. Gans looking over the middle. Flush. Gets rid of it. Passes incomplete. Off the hands of Todd Peterson. Kansas State defense. They play that 3-4. The line lost Steve Klein. The nose tackle to injury. So Brandon Balkum is going to get the start in the center. The linebackers. Childs, Roland, Walker, and Campbell. Look for Campbell to play a little more defensive end today. And in the secondary, Justin McKinney. He's their leading tackler. Last week we saw him get a pick against Iowa State. And with Klein, that big run-stopping nose guard out of there for Kansas State, look for Nebraska to have some success running the ball against this 3-4 defense. Third down and nine. Straight drop, Kansas State brings four. Under pressure, going deep, passes tipped, incomplete. 
intended for Nate Swift, the junior out of Hutchinson, Minnesota. Right place to go, but just the wrong ball to get there. Gans has to drive that ball in there. It was a deep post, but the wind's blowing a little bit. You have to take a little bit out of it in terms of getting it in the air and just drive that football to Swift. He was open. And Titchener will be back to kick it away for Nebraska from his own 21 yard line. Nelson and Murphy back to receive it. They're the top return, punt return team in college football. Nelson's already got a couple for TDs. Kicking with the win, a spiraling click, kick, fair catch is being called for by Murphy. It'll be a 36 yard punt. In the first quarter, senior day in Nebraska, we are scoreless. With a Kansas State win today, Ron Prince will be the second K-State coach to have 13 wins in his first two years, Gary Lohman being the other. His Wildcats first and 10 from about the 28-yard line. Second possession of the ball game. Freeman, quick three-step drop, throws it out on the flat, incomplete. That kind of goes with the philosophy of Ron Prince offensively, which is something Mike Shanahan also has. Pass to score, run to win. Yeah, pass is where you're going to get the big plays, and they, Kansas State wants to pass and pass and pass some more. Run to win means that running sets up the way you move the change. You have to run effectively, sometimes on first down, but you're you're trying to get in that third and manageable situation, and then you have to run effectively in the red zone to be a high-scoring team, and then to close out games, you also have to run. Well, the offense of Kansas State was out of sync in the Iowa State game last week. This will be Johnson. Nothing doing up to the 30-yard line. We'll give him a pickup of two on the play. And Ron, we've talked about the, the woes and read about the woes of Nebraska's run defense. Now, if you look at the, the statistics, you think, how in the world did we get to this point? And right now, they're just not as effective up front as they have been. Cosgrove talked to us about that yesterday. He didn't want to point anyone out, but it's a one-gap defense. You literally have one-gap responsibility up front. If you're not in the gap, a runner has room to run. Gonzalez wide to the left, looking for Nelson over the middle. Freeman decides to keep it. He's got the first down at the 40-yard line. Great job running the football, and he's not really a good runner, but the thing about Josh Freeman, he's improved his footwork so much. And what I like is in the end, you see the foot, footwork, but it's because of a good decision. He's nimble enough to make plays like that. He's a very big man. I mean, he's 6'6", 250 pounds. Think of Dante Culpepper when you see Josh Freeman, but it's not running exclusively. It's being effective when you have to do it, and he can do just that. Now he'll try from the shotgun. As Kelly mentioned, he's a big guy. Fakes the handoff to Johnson. Still has it. Looks over the middle. Passes complete to Gonzalez into Kansas State territory. Let's take a look at this Nebraska defense under Bill Callahan. And it's quite a telling story there. Yeah, and what you need to look at is sacks and tackles for loss represent pressure. Look how the numbers were growing, and then they fall off the face of the planet right there. All of that trickles into the points allowed. And that's what Nebraska's lacking defensively. The pressure element mm -hmm. that pressures an offense. Pick up a 12 on that play. Pushki in motion. First and 10, three-step drop again. Deep out pattern caught. Inside the 40-yard line of Jordy Nelson. You know, you have heard a lot the last two weeks about Jordy Nelson. This man out of Riley, Kansas, just an outstanding day last week. 14 receptions, 214 yards versus Iowa State. New record for yards in a ball game. This is a young man that will do anything for this team. All-American voters, this guy is an All-American. Yeah, there's, there's no question about that. And the knowledge of the game is very apparent. The feel that he has when he's running his routes, finishing routes, but also reading a defense along the way. Second down and short. This is almost a throwaway down for the Wildcat offense. Handed off to Johnson. I don't think he got the first down. He lost the football. I think they're saying he was down. And It'll be close to the first down. I think we're at finally market. It will be a first down. Yeah, I think initially he was passed, and then the, the hit. 
knocked him back past the first down marker, but this is a good sign for Nebraska's defense. Kansas State isn't real complicated offensively in their run game. They really only have one, or actually two runs, a zone running play out of that one back set, and then they'll move a, an H back or a tight end back there or a full back and run more of a power game. Really two plays is all it amounts to. First and 10. Ball on the 37-yard line of Nebraska. Kansas State on the move. Straight drop. Freeman hit as he throws. Caught to Nelson inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line. Freeman took a wallop, and so did Jordy Nelson from Larry Asante. And this is exactly what ne Nebraska has to guard against, is letting Jordy Nelson get in the middle. Good pressure right there at the end by Kevin Dixon, number 97, but it's the great catch. But you cannot let Jordy Nelson into the middle of the field. That's where he's very, very dangerous. Now Josh Freeman goes wide to the left. Nelson in the slot. James Johnson is back. He's playing a little quarterback. Ball is loose. Picked up by Murphy, and he saves it, but not before he's dropped at the 33-yard line. Freeman went wide to the left on there. You can see some of the Nebraska defenders now looking at each other going, was that the quarterback over there? Yeah. Whoops, the light finally went on. But what I don't like about this play, the direct snap from Veers, the center, who has had some trouble snapping out of that shotgun snap since he's taken over for the doors early in the year. But then you're snapping to a running back that isn't used to catching it. I think sometimes coaches can outthink themselves in this game of football. Second down and 25 to Nelson. Looks for a block, cuts inside. Gets close to the 20, down to the 21 yard line. Orton Grigsby on the stop. They lost 15, by the way, on that previous play. Well, Ron, talk to me about that for a second. Yeah. You've been around the game a lot. Why do you outthink yourself? You're moving the ball down the field, running your offense, and then you, you go to this exotic play that you do not have a chance to practice very much, and it, it cost them that time. Maybe you're trying to catch them off guard, but when this Kansas State offense operates well, they've got great balance in the pass game, which we've seen up the bat. Third down, 15 to go. Four-man rush, Freeman, plenty of time. Over the middle again to Nelson, touchdown, Kansas State. Once again, Jordy Nelson getting into the middle of the field. And Asante, number four, is the one that's going to be covering him, but he's expecting help. As Jordy Nelson comes in right there, number four, Asante, is expecting the safety. Number 13 that's coming down to give him more help than that, and he just simply wasn't there. You just said you cannot allow him in the middle of the field, and they did. The extra point is good. Jordy Nelson, nine touchdowns on the year. Josh Freeman has thrown 15. Kansas State has taken the lead. second leading receiver four catches 51 yards and a touchdown on that drive for the ninth time in 10 games Kansas State scores first in a game the only time they didn't was last week versus Iowa State Brooks Rossman the junior from San Diego California set to kick it away and Nebraska respond or is this team and crowd in a little bit of a shock this will be Grigsby Still on his feet. Say goodbye to Courtney Grixby. senior out of Omaha, Nebraska. You know, you just got this sense, Kelly, when Kansas State scored, oh my goodness, here we go again. But the first return for a touchdown on a kick since Joe Walker in 1998 got the crowd believing again. 
The ball by Alex Henry is good. He's perfect down the year. Look at this again. It was exciting. Courtney Grigsby, one of the seniors being honored here today. The kickoff returns are all about stopping the initial pressure, getting a seam, and then it's just speed and athletic ability running to daylight. And you talk about a senior that's being honored, and he's from Omaha, so he understands what this program in Nebraska is all about. What a great way or a great guy to make that big play. Kansas State ninth in the Big 12 as far as kickoff return yardage, and it was something that Ron Prince was concerned about last week. But this got the crowd of 84,000, another sellout, at least back on their feet, showing a little bit of hope. And there was a lot of question coming in how the crowd was going yeah. to react today because there were signs, of course, yeah. last week and, and in, in the past few weeks. But this crowd has responded as true Nebraska classy fans always do. Yeah, and, and you could see the way that they came to honor the seniors today primarily. And that's what Nebraska is all about. That tradition is what they think they're losing under this administration. But they're here to celebrate, and what a great play to do it with. Adi Kanalik, who's having trouble on his kickoffs. This is a short kick, and Kansas State will get good field position. Close to the 40-yard line to the 39-yard line. John McArdle is the one who came up with it, and that is something that really has concerned the coaching staff in Nebraska because Kanalik's got an outstanding leg, but he's really struggled since last week. You know, it's like a this your golf swing, really. And I've seen your golf swing, and it's very much <laughs> like your golf swing, actually. But it's the swing of the leg, and sometimes you just kind of get out of out of sync with that, and you miss hit. And the harder you try to hit it, the worse it gets. And they told them, don't think about it. Just get out and swing the leg. You cannot tell a kicker not to That's think right. about it. Freeman looks past tip, almost intercepted. Pass intended for Murphy. Tyler Wartman could have had it. Of course, Joe Gans is the quarterback of Nebraska today because Sam Keller was injured in the Texas game, and he's with our Lewis Johnson now. Yeah, I think he's still trying to catch his breath after that touchdown. What did that do for you guys on the sideline? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we've been we've been talking. The team's been talking about popping one of those things forever. Right. And I don't know when it goes back to 98 or something the last time a kick return was brought. I mean, that's... I mean, that's like popping a bottle of champagne right there. That's beautiful. Let's get back to your shoulder. You've got the broken clavicle that's healing. How is that going? It's healing really fast. Um, the great thing about it, or the, the tough thing about the clavicle is it hurts real bad for like the first week. And then it starts getting better, as you can see, like I'm moving around well. Right. And it's kind of a, a tease because you feel like you can be doing something. And then you'll do something and it'll, it'll shock you because it's got to mend all the way. So it's, it's just a waiting game right now. And I'm just... You know, biding my time with, you know, lots of cardio work and things of that nature. And, and your job now is to help uh, Gans. How is he doing? How are you helping him? How much help does he need? I'm, I was just going to say, Joe doesn't need much help. You know, he's, he's obviously been in the system. And I think we're finding out, we found out last week when they played Kansas, he's a tough competitor. We've always known that, but you know, he's a, he doesn't need much help from me. I just, you know, little things I see. You know, because it always helps. I always wanted him to tell me the same things. So, you know, we, he's, he's doing fine. He's a great competitor, and, you know, it's the team's responded very well to him. All right, well, good luck to you. Don't re-injure yourself celebrating, all right? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. i got to be careful about that. That's it. Okay, Ron, back up to you. All right, thank you, Lewis. I thought he was going to throw the shoulder out during that kickoff oh, yeah. return. By the way, that was a 17-yard pickup by James Johnson just a couple of plays ago. Nothing on that, so it's second down and 10 for this Kansas State offense. On that 17-yard run, the significant thing is we saw once again Nebraska's defense out of position, didn't have the outside gap to the mm -hmm. left cover. Now the safeties drop back real deep. Pressure on Freeman, drop back at the 49-yard line. That's only the 10th sack of the year for this Nebraska defense, a team that two years ago led the country in this category. With 50 sacks, that's what they led with. And Octavian is one of those guys that has have brought pretty consistent pressure, the loop inside by, by Dixon right there, and then Octavian comes around the back door and catches up with Freeman. But that is what the Nebraska fans want to see, and they just haven't seen it enough this year. Octavian, one and a half sacks this year. Third down and 14. Whistle, penalty. Oh, I, I don't know about 
about that. It was so loud. They're going to throw a flag against Nebraska. And I tell you what, that is tough. We could not hear the whistle up here. I think the officials need to talk about this one. I didn't even hear the whistle blow. I saw the flag go. Now Bo Rude's going to go in there and try to talk to him. Puts the helmet on, tries to get the head in there. I think the fans may have a, a little beef here. This is Gerald Wright. False start. Offense. The penalty will be five yards. After the play, dead ball personal foul. Number 97 on the offense. That will be 15 yards from the resulting spot. Automatic first down. Now Kevin Dixon, the culprit. Let's let's uh, look at it again and listen. I'll tell you what. That was uh, that was pretty simultaneous there. When you got you're coming in and they're showing it on the big board here. Yeah. That's and, tough to hear. And Kevin Dixon, number 97. Who's called for that penalty? Remember, we're talking, we just got been talking about a defensive line yeah. that needs to get after the quarterback. Those guys are lathered up on that defensive line, and they don't hear anything, I guarantee it. So yeah, I think that was ticky tack. And now Kansas State will go with a couple of tight ends. Nelson moves up. Leon Patton now in the backfield. He has the ball looking for something. Finds very little. Ty Steinkuhler, dad, of course, Dean won the Outland Trophy on the stop. Saturday, November 24th at 2 o'clock Eastern, Noon Mountain. BYU continues to make their case for the top 25 as they sit on top of the Mountain West. The Cougars hope to keep their two-year undefeated conference record alive when they host Utah versus college football. It's on. Once again, that's in two weeks. Yeah, BYU, the big win against TCU last week, and all bets are off when Utah and BYU get it on between the lines. Second down and nine. Nebraska with a lot on the line of scrimmage. Freeman running away from the pressure. Throws into the flat. Caught complete again to Jordy Nelson. His fifth reception of the afternoon. Asante on the coverage. I tell you, he just he doesn't have this blazing speed, but this guy, as you hit just a moment ago, he finishes his route so well. Yeah, he's a great route finisher, and that means a lot because you can be open initially, but you have to finish the route right at the end. He kind of works back to the football a little bit. He just does a lot of the little things right. He just finds a way to get open. I played with the guy in Seattle named Steve Largen, and Nelson reminds yeah. me of him just a little bit. Maybe a little more physical talent, but the same good feel of the game. We can only get him into politics now, like Steve. Booski in motion. We have another penalty flag. This time the Nebraska defense doesn't hit anybody. This will be the second Ball motion start. penalty. 65 offense. K State. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Logan Robinson from Agra, Kansas. Well, the, the noise is causing Ron Prince's young team problems right now. And remember, they, they went into a hostile environment to start the season at Auburn. Mm -hmm. And they had, I think it was 17 penalties. And uh, the majority of them were the offensive line not communicating and jumping early. We're seeing it here today. Most penalized team in the Big 12, 117 out of 119 in college football. Johnson back in on first and 15. Pushki in motion. Here's Johnson. Going to be dragged down from behind at the 30-yard line. Good defensive effort again by Ty Steinkuhler, the junior from right here in Lincoln. And Steinkuhler is that defensive tackle that they were counting on coming into this year. He's been banged up. And his greatest asset is, A, his hard work, and B, he's very quick off the ball. And you can see it there, the play going away. He slides down the line and makes a very, very good play for his defense. Ten rushes, eight yards for Kansas State against the rush defense that has been horrendous this year. Two tight ends on second down and a bunch. Freeman changing the play at the line. Play clock at two, he gets it off. Here's Jackson. Let's go to the right side. We'll try it. Freeman trying to help out with a block. He's got some room, knocked out of bounds, and drilled out of bounds at the 13-yard line. 
Ben Eisenhart, the senior from Culbertson, Nebraska, whose dream was to play for the Huskers with a big time shot, but not before he picked up 17. And watch the backside of this defense. You have to be disciplined. See all those defensive linemen and linebackers skating by, lacking discipline to close the back door. You always have to expect that the runner can come back at any time. And that's what James Johnson does right there. And nobody is home for the black shirts of Nebraska. Well, it's third down and short now. A little play action. Incomplete. Jordy Nelson, the intended receiver, but again, Freeman finds a spot on the turf. Yeah, Ty Steinkerler continuing to have a high motor and getting after Freeman, and this is what Kansas State really epitomizes their entire season. Drive the ball, look pretty efficient as you're going between the 20s, but you get bogged down and you end up kicking a field goal as opposed to getting the ball in the end zone. Brooks Rossman, two of three, kicking field goals last week versus Iowa State. They'll mark this at the 21-yard line. It will be a 31-yard attempt on the Marcus Watts hold. And it is good. 20 of 26 on the air for the junior from San Diego, California, the transfer from Ohio University. Kansas State has regained the lead. We are still in the first. It is an absolutely perfect day for football in Lincoln, Nebraska. You can come here sometimes in November, Kelly. As you know, we could have snow on the ground, but temperatures expected to be in the 60s. The leaves have changed colors, and you're all excited because oh. deer season is open. <laughs> yeah, opening day of deer season. What flashbacks. I remember those days when the leaves start to change and they start to fall off the tree. It's time for Nebraska football, man. I was born and raised right in the middle of that. Rossman's kick is going to be short. It'll be Grixby again. Already has a touchdown return, gets up to the 25, nothing doing this time. Stay tuned for the Athlab Home versus Away Trivia Challenge and your chance to win a plasma TV and the grand prize trip to the Hula Bowl in Hawaii on January the 12th. Last week's winner, congratulations, Eric Hemseth from Des Moines, Iowa. And after having two of Iowa State's victories on versus, Lewis, you and I, I think, will get the keys to the city from Gene Chisholm, I think. Why are you and Lewis? What is no, I said you. Oh, okay. No, 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 I'll keep you. All right. Not a problem. I love us in games, <laughs> We're huge in Sheboygan. Roy Helu, the true freshman from Danville, California, now in the backfield. Coaches were bragging on him yesterday. Danzo drops back, goes over the middle deep. Caught Purify. Maurice Purify with his 41st catch of the year. Joe Gann says this guy's got banana fingers. They're huge. And at 6'4", 220 with gigantic hands, you throw the ball up and you let him engulf it just like that, even with tight coverage. If Gans throws the right ball and that big body of Purify shields the defender, he just, it's like a vacuum cleaner and you have great confidence in that as a quarterback. You know, and one of the things on Maurice Purify is he catches the ball in traffic. He's not afraid, we saw it there. First and 10 for the Huskers, Wildcat territory. Gans looks to put it up. Rush gets away. Still on his feet. He can make plays. And he's able to pick up about seven on the play before Justin Rowland, the senior from Ponca City, Oklahoma, comes up with his second stop. And the difference between Joe Gans and Sam Keller is this right here. Joe doesn't have the arm that Sam does, but Sam... Joe can do stuff like this, avoids the rush, and then makes plays with his feet. Coming out of Illinois, he was a dual-threat quarterback. Mm -hmm. And you can see it in that play right there. They're not going to expose him in the run game a whole lot with design quarterback runs because they have to keep him healthy because Sam Keller is over there nursing a collarbone at this point in time. And Kansas State's going to whistle for a timeout with 3.18 left to play in the first. Nebraska facing second and three. Maurice Purify last week, seven receptions, 158 yards, his best day ever, three touchdowns. Watch this catch, though, Kelly. This is NFL. One-handed it. Yeah, a lot of times you see wide receivers practicing that in practice, but he has gigantic hands. Look at that. The size of the hand, the size of the fingers, and... 
Joe Gans told us yesterday, it's banana fingers. They're gigantic. and But a receiver, you have to have big, strong hands, ideally. Mm -hmm. But you also have to have soft hands. And Purify seems to have the whole package. There's offensive coordinator Sean Watson to his left right there in your picture. He is an outstanding offensive coordinator. He could not say enough about Maurice Purify because he's overcome his brother being shot this year and his girlfriend dying. And Sean Watson says this young man's having a very special season considering the tragedies he's had. Second down at three for the Huskers. He loose still in the backfield and he will get the carry. Leans forward and he'll get the first down. Nice job by the true freshman who's elevated his game. They've got a couple of good true freshmen behind Marlon Lucky. Quinton Castile, who is just kind of like Javorski Lane out of Texas A&M. Cody Glenn has become kind of the odd man out here in the Ibex spot. Yeah, Castile is a big running back at 245, but he also has four or five speed coming out of high school. And Roy Helu, we saw in that play, he's a big guy as well. They have a lot of running backs. But the young guys have to learn to pass mm -hmm. protect. That's why they're not getting a lot of playing time at this point. About purify with a little halfback pass. He's looking. No place to go. Being traced from behind, but he still makes something out of it. Marcus Watts was chasing him from the backside. Purify just do it, did a great job of not losing the football. The purify, obviously, the receiver on the end around looking to throw this ball deep on a one receiver route down the field but when you have the ball in your hand you have to make good decisions the receiver wasn't open down the field it was Jared Snug so Purify does the next next best thing and makes a play with his feet pick up of seven on the play second and short for the Huskers right at the 30 yard line he lose straight ahead close to the first down Depends on where they mark it. Let's take a look at the Tom Tom 2 travel log. About a two hour uh, drive from Kansas State here. And the last time Kansas State made the trip to Lincoln back in 05, Nebraska won at 27 25 in 91 meetings. Nebraska leads the overall series 74 to 15. And there's the real Tom Tom. Tom Osborne, now the interim athletic director. And we get the sense, too, as they have the measurement here. And, having been around this program a lot of years uh, talking to the people in the program they said you know when coach Osborne took over there was a sense of relief it's almost a relaxation <laughs> but we still got the sense talking to people yesterday Kelly and you can disagree with me there there's still a lot of tenseness here in Lincoln Nebraska especially in the athletic department people are still <laughs> wondering what is going on oh yeah and I even though Tom gonna... Osborne has relieved a lot of the fears uh, we we had a chance to sit down uh at least for a moment or two with Coach Callahan yesterday. And yeah, tension is exactly the way I would describe what I saw and experienced, and, and rightly so. You know, the people here in Nebraska aren't used to what's going on. They haven't seen it before, really, in our lifetime. And Coach Osborne is that calming influence. And now it's what decisions does Coach Osborne make to get this ship mm -hmm. headed in the right direction? Well, Coach Callahan refused to answer any questions about the current situation. Quentin Castile now in the backfield. He's got it. Puts the big head down, and he gets down close to the first down. I think he may have got it by just a little itty bit. Ray Cheatham coming up from the stop. But Coach Callahan's agent, by the name of Gary O'Hagan from IMG International Marketing Group, he didn't help anything in today's Omaha World Herald. Tom Chattel wrote a great column. Here's what his agent said. If they don't want him to be the coach, they can fire him. Then fire him. That's what his uh, agent was saying. And he said, <laughs> the, the main quote, though, was, listen to how stupid you people are. You people need to start studying soil content or something. Why don't you find out how many pair of socks get washed every day in the locker room? Doesn't help the situation at all. Hand off to Lucky. So his agent really kind of threw a lot of fuel on this fire. He said, that program the media is contributing is self-devouring. You know how when flesh starts eating flesh, that's what's happening down there. Now, we don't know if he was speaking for Coach Callahan, and you pray that he wasn't. Well, I believe in the, in the reality of what representation means, and if an agent is representing me, I'm certainly going to make sure I, he knows where I'm coming from and what my mind is on the thing. So Coach Callahan will have an opportunity to correct that if that isn't his feelings. 
We're not even sure if Coach Callahan saw the paper on that. Yes, looks left, throws right, gets it to Lucky. He's got some running room. Inside the 20, touchdown, Nebraska. on the touchdown by Marlon Lucky, his ninth TD of the year. Ron, let me give you a little insight to the way coaches think in this game. Remember that play from Iowa State? Mm -hmm. We saw it about three or four times last week. A very productive play that we hadn't seen out of Iowa State prior to that. Nebraska says, you know what, it worked last week. Let's try it on our field, and guess what? The same result. Alex Henry for the extra point. He's been perfect this whole year, and he remains there. Nice job of Dan selling it, though. Yeah, and what you want to do with the, an athletic, speedy defense that Kansas State is known for is use their speed against them, the misdirection, fake to the left, and come back and throw the screen to the right with the running back that tends to get lost after the play-action fake. And then Lucky has the skill to make a little and take it into the end zone. Very well-disguised, well-executed. And Kansas State didn't make the corrections from last week very well. Marlon Lucky, one of the most versatile performers for this Nebraska team, came in with 61 receptions, most by a running back in college football. Used to wear number 20. Of course, that was the great Johnny Rogers. Yeah, yeah and he... Marlon Lucky just said, you know, it, it's nothing against Johnny Rogers. I basically haven't lived up to the number, and I want to kind of go my own way and do my own thing, make my own name, so to speak, and he's doing it. A very good all-around player. He's grown into that position. In the West Coast offense, the running back has to be a very effective receiver, a very good pass protector, let alone be effective when you carry the football. And Alec will try it again. His last kickoff wasn't very good. The man that was... Born in war-torn Bosnia, now out of Fort Worth, Texas, said the first time he saw football, he said it was stupid. <laughs> he said everybody played soccer, spent some time in Germany, and I, I, I think, think if I think if you play soccer, I don't think I'd be calling anything stupid. <laughs> and Kelly's email address for you soccer coaches are. Well, he'll try it again. This is more like it. Nothing doing. 15 yard line. A check in with Lewis Johnson. All right, well, uh, right now on the, uh, on the, uh, sorry, Nebraska sideline here, we've got uh, Courtney Grixby who uh, electrified this big red crowd earlier with that kickoff return for a touchdown. He's been getting some attention to his left ankle. They've taken off the shoe, they retaped him. He's got a noticeable lip. Grixby does and we'll have to see if he can get back on the field and be effective. He's trying to give that nod like I'm okay, I'm okay, but right now he's got a serious limp. We'll see what happens as the game develops, guys. All right, Lewis, good job on that. Kansas State finds themselves first and 10 from about their own 16-yard line. Trailing 14 to 10, final 26 seconds of the opening quarter. Penalty flag, let's stop everything. That'll be the third motion penalty against Kansas State. False start. State. 63 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And if there was any wondering about how Nebraska's fans, Cornhusker Nation, was going to respond today, you see it in those three penalties. Yeah. It is incredibly hard to hear down on the field, and that young offensive line, and really a young offense overall, is having a hard time in Kansas State. Kansas State team. Setting school records for completed passes this year. And Nebraska looks like they may be coming. Only rush four, a little delayed draw right up the middle. Johnson gets the first down as he nears the 30-yard line. With 19 seconds left in the quarter, Brian Wilson, Bo Rude combining to make the stop. Cosgrove told me yesterday, second and long or even first and long, screen or draw and my team understands that they understood it but they just didn't play the defense very well that time and they got gashed by that draw eight rushes 49 yards 
for Johnson. That's going to be it the first quarter. Both teams already heading out. Clock ticks inside of 10 seconds. It's been a great opening quarter. Kansas State struck first, but then Nebraska electrified the crowd with Courtney Grixby's 94-yard kickoff return. The stands are full. It's senior day in Nebraska. Quarter number two, straight ahead. Tom Osborne won back-to-back -back national titles, 94-95, won his third in 97, had an 84% winning percentage here at Nebraska, now the interim athletic director. And as we mentioned, and we can't stress this enough, a calming force. Is this another penalty? It is. This will be the fourth penalty against this Kansas State offense. They Full average start. eight a game. 78 offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. Alisena, Alisena. He is the culprit. Ron Prince wants to know about it. Alisena this time and Robinson the time before. It isn't like it's just one guy, but you have to wait for the center Veers to snap the football and then move. Four false starts and Freeman now rolling out looking for Jordy Nelson. Instead, he gets it to Deion Murphy. He'll get close to the 39-yard line. We'll mark it at about the 29. It'll be a pickup of six. Anthony Blue, the freshman out of Cedar Hill, Texas, just outside of Dallas on the stop. This Deion Murphy went to Coffeeville Community College, an outstanding player. He's an aspiring actor. He says he patterns his game after Dante Hall. And his dad actually coached Dante Hall in high school. Who does he pattern his acting after? I haven't seen him act yet. <laughs> <laughs> but he's that big play guy. He's the speed yeah. guy. And a lot of the special plays revolve around him. On second and nine. Try the left side of that Nebraska defense. Not a whole lot going on. Steve Octavian, senior out of Naples, Florida, already with six tackles in the ballgame, including a sack. Kansas State, you can see through the first quarter, Freeman, 7-11, 96 yards. That second drive was just outstanding. Johnson has rushed nearly to 50 yards with Jordy Nelson, five catches already with a touchdown. And, you know, relatively speaking, Kansas State's been pretty balanced most of the year. They want to throw the ball, run effectively, but the same thing that's happened here today has happened all year. Ineffective in the red zone. Third down and six. Here comes the blitz. Freeman reads it, pass, dropped. They're going to call it incomplete, yes. Steve Octavian with the hit on James Johnson. Great stop again by this black shirt defense of Nebraska. A very good job by Cosgrove calling pressure when he needs pressure. They get it that time. Just when the offensive lineman stepped inside, an opening right to the quarterback opened up, and Octavian finished the play at the other end. Ball is loose from the 18-yard line. Jones looking, has some room, sidesteps one more. Still on his feet, looks for another block, finally hit from behind as he gets inside the 40. Andre Jones, the senior out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida. His longest return prior to that was 24 yards. You know what's hit odd? 47, that was 43-yard return, Kelly. What's odd about this, Ron, is a lot of times a muffed ball like that kind of works in your favor because it sets up the blocking more. A lot of good returns happen because of patience. When you drop the ball, you have to be patient. Joan picks it up and makes a nice play just as the return was being set up. Well, one of the wraps on this Nebraska offense is they haven't come out fast in the opening quarter. In fact, only one time they scored more than seven points in the opening stands, and that was Kansas last week. By the way, that's a season-long punt return for the Huskers. And a new wrinkle with no running backs in the yeah. backfield behind the quarterback. Jones going down the middle, has a man, touchdown, Nebraska! Brad's Hardy, his first touchdown reception of the year, it covered 36 yards. And Ron, it wasn't very good defensive recognition from Kansas State. I pointed out the empty backfield. It meant one more fast wide receiver out, and Hardy was one of them, and they just totally dropped coverage down the middle of the field. 
And I think you have to also give some kudos to Joe Gams on that because he not only had a little mustard on it, it was right on the money. Alex Henry will try the extra point again. Balls down, kick up and away, and it's good. Nebraska doesn't do a lot of empty backfield, but Gans knows what to look for and take advantage of it. Hardy is open because of the lack of recognition. Throw the right ball to the open guy. Big play, Nebraska. And Gans knows that his team needs a lot of those this afternoon. When the coaches talked about France Hardy, they say this young man's got home run potential. He gets his first touchdown reception of the year, only his fifth of his career. And that has given Nebraska a 21 10 lead here in quarter number two. And as we were during the break, we were looking at the sidelines and you can see the return yards there favoring Nebraska. But one thing we saw that they haven't seen on the sideline of Nebraska in five weeks a lot of smiles and high five and long time to go. There's still a lot of football left. But it's like these guys get the sense that we're feeling it today. This may be the day. Yeah, and a win cures a lot of things. And that's what we're seeing right now in Nebraska. Playing well, having some good things happen. They're having fun playing this afternoon. This will be Justin McKinney. He already has one in his career. Kickoff return for a touchdown. This time he's going to be corralled as Nebraska doing a nice job back at the 28-yard line. Ricky Tenars on the stop. Now, as we talked about, the Nebraska team definitely needs a victory, and Joe Gann says they want to be the team that continues the Nebraska tradition. It'll be awesome. You know, I mean, that's exactly what this team needs. We need a win. You know, we need to get that taste out of our mouth. We lost five in a row, and we care about this program more than anybody, and it's just really tough on us to go through this losing streak, especially with the tradition here. You know, we know what fans expect, and they should expect that because we've won for so long here. And, you know, we don't want to be that team that, you know, brings everything down. We want to be the team that, you know, carries on this great tradition. This time over the middle, incomplete. And just picking up on that, you know, there's so much written and talked about, not only in Nebraska, but nationally, whose fault is this because of the five? They point to the coaching staff, the coordinators, the players. It doesn't really matter because these young men that are playing for Nebraska, they bleed Nebraska red. They care about this program and they're hurting. And that's yeah. the bottom line here. And you can point fingers at this man or anybody you want, but these kids are playing hard. Second down and 10 for Kansas State, trailing 21 to 10 here in quarter number two. Very loud again. Three step drop by Freeman into the flat. Complete, not a whole lot going on for Jerron Mastrude, the big tight Jerron Mastrude, the big sophomore from Beaverton, Oregon. In fact, he may lose a couple on that play. And Nebraska just doing a nice job in a lot of the areas they haven't been doing consistently well throughout the year. Run defense, they're in their one gap responsibilities. They're tackling at a much more effective level than they have consistently throughout the year as well. And their coverage has been pretty good. Third down and nine. Kansas State, two of five this afternoon. Fumbled snap. Freeman has some problems. Look out. Dumps it off. Incomplete to Johnson. I think they're going to say it's an incomplete pass, but Kevin Dixon, who has been a menace the whole day, to Josh Freeman again in the Kansas State backfield. Well, Kevin Dixon has been, been getting a lot of time throughout the year because Ty Steincooler has been banged up just a little bit, so Dixon has been in there, and Dixon's motor has been running the moment the ball was kicked off this afternoon. Rayer this time kicking with the win. He gets a boomer. This will go back to about the 17-yard line. Penalty flies coming in every which way. And it's going to come back. Dixon, by the way, three quarterback pressures today. 56-yard punt, by the way, by Rayer. 11 on the return, but a lot of it's going to come back. And Nebraska will start deep. Backed up this time, and this will be the first time Gans mm -hmm. has had to control this offense today in a backed up situation. During the return, illegal block in the back, number seven on the return team. The penalty was administered half the distance to the goal. First down. Nebraska, a pretty clean team as far as penalties, only about six a ball game. We've got a timeout, 12.07 in the second. Nebraska leads it 21 to 10.
Just about three minutes gone by here in quarter number two. Nebraska leading at 21 to 10 over the Kansas State Wildcats, along with Lewis Johnson, Kelly Stoffer, Amron Thulin. Backed up on their own 10 yard line. Yes, they play action. This will slip to Lucky. Gets some running room, lowers the shoulder as he gets up to the 20, to the 22 yard line, a pickup of 12. This Nebraska defense has been playing well as of late. Bo Rude doing a great job, and his brother standing by now with Lewis Johnson. Yeah, I have Bear Rude down here, and I imagine any offensive player that's run across this field since the 70s has probably had a rude awakening. But <laughs> what's it like to come back, Tampa Bay, with the bye week? You're here watching everybody play. You know, I saw at the start of the year on the schedule it was going to work out. I mean, it's, it's awesome because, I mean, it would, it would have been the one game I would have picked to come back for, too. So to see his last game here is, is real special. Tell me about your, your family, uh, particularly your father, who first had the sack record here. Uh, what's it been like to follow them, follow the Nebraska programs, and come in, and you end up becoming the sack leader? <laughs> you know, it, it's awesome. It's uh, it's something I grew up going all these games, and, uh, you know, it's kind of spoiled because you don't, you don't realize how special this is until you leave, and not everybody's got it. So I love it. You know, I love coming back to these games, and, uh, you know, we're, we're very proud of all this stuff here. And a tough season, so what's it like to watch it from afar not be be able to get on the field and make a difference yeah I mean it's tough you know but you know all you can do is support them you know the one thing I hated when I was playing was just you know criticizing from far away you know I, I just try to support them because you know I know the efforts there I know they're trying so you know, all you do is support them and you know, like right now they're playing well I'm, I'm loving it. all right well enjoy the game and uh, who knows another route maybe to come in a few a uh, few weeks few years you know? time away from that. All right. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> well Lewis will be appearing at the Cornhusker Hotel through front next Friday <laughs> And you can see on this graphic the all-time leading tacklers, Bear Rude, 432 tackles. Wow. His brother, by the way, Bo Rude, just passed their father, dad, Tom. Tom was also a captain, just like Barrett and Bo. So it's the, the Nebraska Red is definitely part of the Rude family. And uh, Bo Rude, his mother tragically passed away, a heart attack 16 years ago, and they had an incredible relationship. And, says he dedicates everything he does to his mother. Yeah, 16 months ago, actually. 16 Ron, months so ago. It's, it's still raw in their heart, but they're playing on, and they gather here in memory of her, actually. They're down at eight. Purify trying to reach back and make the one-handed catch again. But we've got a penalty flag back behind the line of scrimmage, back at the 16-yard line. Purify's kind of mad. He thought he should have had that. Roughing the passer. Number 96 defense. 15 yards previous spot. First down. Moses Manu. That is the fifth penalty against Kansas State today. We talked with Ron Prince about those penalties last week prior to the Iowa State game, and he said they, they really have it corrected. A lot of them were the miscommunications early in the year, but he didn't think they were a highly penalized team since then. But stuff like that will drive Ron Prince absolutely mad. Well, Nate Swift in the slot on the left side. Lone setback, 10-10 to play in the second, 21-10, Nebraska leading. Jams looks right, quickly scans left, has a man, first down, and a little extra to spare. Inside the 45 to the 43-yard line is Terrence Nunn. That is his first catch of the afternoon. And this is what Joe Gans' knowledge of this offense does. He starts to the right, quickly goes back to the left. That's how it has to happen. And you have to get to your second and third receivers in that progression quickly or you don't get the ball off. Excellent job by Joe Gans. And a big game. First and 10. Ball's on the 43 of Kansas State. Has some time. Looks just dumps it off short. Nice little shake and bake move down to the 32 yard line is Quinton Castile. Only his second reception of the year for the true freshman from LaPorte, Texas. A little shake and bake. This is a double ankle breaker right here. <laughs> Joe Gans coming underneath the soft cover two coverage by Kansas State exactly where he should have gone with it but whoops right yeah. there Justin McKinney I believe was the beneficiary of that move wow that's a freshman Ron that's a freshman that weighs 245 pounds he picks up 11 on the play now Marlon Lucky back in the eye back spot he Phillips in motion they look for Lucky the little slip he's still being able to make stuff out of nothing keeps running still on his feet down to the 12 yard line Running back record 
for receptions, yards, and a season and career. And this is what Nebraska fans have grown to love is the second effort by their running backs and actually all their players. But Marlon Lucky has been doing that all year. He's been solid from the beginning up to this point. They're starting to get a whole lot more out of him, especially in that receiving department. Three receptions, 58 yards for Lucky. You can see the red zone offense for Nebraska this year. First and 10 for the Huskers. I think the play clock may have run down. It is. It will be delay of game. Delay of game. Boy, that hurts. Offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Nebraska eight for their last eight in the red zone. You see scores in the bottom of your screen. We'll keep you posted on what's going on. Comes in on top of Wake, Penn State over Temple. Bill Callahan looking on, trying to break his squad's five-game losing skid and not lose to Kansas State in Kansas, which if they do that, it'll be the first time in 40 years that K-State and KU have been able to beat the Huskers in the same year. First down and 15, closing in on eight minutes to play here in quarter number two. And looking, throwing it up to Purify. Touchdown, Nebraska. Penalty flag is down, however. I believe this is going to be offensive pass I interference. It might be. Purify put his hands on the back of the defender and pushed him right by. Pass interference. Offense. Number 16. The penalty is 15 yards. Previous spot. We play first down. And I believe Purify was matched up on Justin McKinney. And Purify, the big receiver at 6-4. McKinney's only 5-9, but you can't do that right there. When you push off to gain an advantage, it's always going to be called on the offense. Right there, it was good up to that point, but instead of pushing the defender by, Purify just has to go straight up and get that football. That was a nice call by that now, official in the corner of the end zone. Well, we, we heard Joe Gans talking about Purify or, and then just how an advantage he has, especially on the fade route. We saw it there. So instead of a touchdown, it's first down and 30. Ball's on the 32-yard line. They just keep backing up. Now Okay, we think we got our audio problems fixed. Picked up a couple on that play. That'll bring up second down and 28 for the Huskers. 740 to play. And surveys the defense. Straight drops, got some time. Wobbly pass, complete down to the 10 yard line. Todd Peterson on the reception, the junior from Grand Island, Nebraska. The former walk on doing a nice job of pulling that in. Sean Watson told us yesterday, Gans is a timing thrower. This is a great example of it. If that ball doesn't come out in time, that very, very narrow window closes. Todd Peterson in that in that seam, that bracketed defense by Kansas State, and that ball needs to be there yeah. exactly at the right time. Well, it was first down and 30. Now it's third down and eight. Lucky to his left. They bunch up the right side. Gans looking, thrown into the end zone. Passes tip. Nice job, Justin McKinney. Had the pick versus Iowa State last week. Got a little hold on it this time. McKinney does a nice job. He's actually a defender out in the flat. In a sense, doesn't have anyone to cover, and so he's reading the quarterback, and he jumps back inside on that football. Very good heads-up play by McKinney. And Alex Henry will attempt the field goal. Perfect on the year, seven for seven. Jake West, the holder. He threw a touchdown pass on a fake last year against Kansas State. This time they put it down, up and away. And it is good. 27-yard field goal by Alex Henry. Eighth of the year, and the Huskers add to their lead.
Joe Gans, 9 for 12, 173 yards, two touchdown passes this afternoon. That's why the Huskers lead 24 10, 639 left in the half. Not a bad start, huh? No, I think, and you know, we were talking during the break. You get the sense, and, and Ron Prince telling us earlier this week, they got outplayed offense, defense, and special teams last week in the loss to Iowa State, but they didn't play with a lot of emotion, and it seems like they've fallen into that right now. Yeah, the emotion is all on the other side of the field in Nebraska. Nebraska's pay, playing with that passion that Joe Gans talked about at the beginning of this game. Adi Kanalik. This will be McKinney. Looking for some room. This time hops over a couple of tacklers, gets up to the 30 yard line. That's where Kansas State will begin. Here is the Aflac home versus away trivia challenge. Text one, two, or three to eight, three, seven, 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 eight, seven for your chance to win a plasma TV and the grand prize trip, of course, to the Hula Bowl in Hawaii, which is January the 12th. 11 year history of the Big 12. How many North Division titles have the Wildcats and Huskers combined to win? Text. One, two, or three, six, seven, or eight. And you can do that right now. All right, Kansas State takes over. First and ten on their own 30-yard line. Freeman seeing some pressure. Throws pass complete up to the 45-yard line. Jordy Nelson on the reception. Six catches already this afternoon. For an update on Josh Freeman, here's Lewis Johnson. Lewis. Well, you know, I've been watching him run on the sideline, and Freeman has been pretty methodical going over and uh, talking on the phone, kind of slapping his players' hands. Don't see much of an emotional exchange mm -hmm. from him as he tries to lead the team. But before the game, we were talking about what happened last week at Iowa State and how they jumped out early, Iowa State did on K-State. He said, that's the kind of thing that can't happen here today. It's already happened. Get the momentum in the second half and try and catch up. That's not what they want, but they're almost there again as we get close to the half. Well, you got that right. Deion Murphy looking for some running room. Nice job by the black shirt defense. Kevin Dixon, who is having an outstanding day. Three quarterback pressures and a tackle. Well, they might dream of scholarships and Super Bowls, but right now the only thing that matters is crushing their arch enemy. Get inside the most heated high school rivalries in the country. A versus original series brought to you by NFL Films. Greatest high school football rivalries. Thursday, 8 o'clock, only on Versus. And, Ron, you just mentioned Kevin Dixon. Right now, Logan Robinson, the left guard, number 65 for Kansas State, absolutely is having no success at blocking Kevin Dixon. Freeman looking under pressure. Hit as he throws. Overthrow. Pass looking for Deion Murphy, but the pressure that this Nebraska defense, this time by Ndamukong Sue, has just done enough to kind of rattle Josh Freeman just a little bit. And this has been lacking in this black shirt defense this entire season. They had nine sacks coming into today. The tackles for loss were way down. You can tell that right now they have a different feel about them. Mm -hmm. Third down and long for Kansas State. 84,000 plus are standing. 19 for the first down. Jordy Nelson is right there. This is where Josh Freeman likes to look. Looks left, little slip screen. Off the hands of James Johnson, incomplete. Kansas State forced to kick it away again. And in third and long, that's really kind of a maintenance play. A draw or a screen, but Kansas State is out of sync, and right now they can't even execute execute the screen. You know, and that's what Ron Prince was talking about. He talked about managing the game as the snap was fumbled just a little bit on third down for Josh Freeman. May Swift held down it right at the 27-yard line, trying to tell him that you don't have to get all of it on third down, just get about half it. Nebraska with the football in the lead in the second. Five forty six left to play in quarter number two along with Kelly Stopper Lewis Johnson. I'm Rod Thula Nebraska leading Kansas State 24 to 10 Kansas State struck first Nebraska has rebounded every time and got first and 10 from their own 27 yard line with Castile Thomas Lawson now will form the eye formation don't purify to get off the field too many guys almost a substitution penalty there. Very easily could have been, but I'm thinking now two tight ends, two running backs, two wide receivers, your lineman and quarterback, that doesn't add up. No, it looks like Frank Solich, Tom Osborne days. The steal straight ahead running. Just bowling over 
of people. Quentin Castillo, they tell him to get out his truck stick. That's a term when you're playing, I guess, a video game and you want to run somebody over, you get to the truck stick. So they keep yelling, Castillo, use your truck stick on guys. And Joe Gans in Nebraska thought that they could run the ball on this team in the double bubble. This is the bubble. One's right here and one's on the other side. The guard is uncovered. Nebraska thinks they can run their zone scheme against that look and be very successful, and that's a good example of it on that last play. Castile's got a little bit of speed, and he's going to stay in there in the I formation again with a couple of tight ends again. Right in this softness right there. Steel, this time he goes to the left side, puts the head down, crosses the 45 down to the 44-yard line. Pickup of eight on the play will set up a second down and two. Boy, I tell you, he is a true freshman, and the one thing that freshmen sometimes have trouble doing is securing the football. That's what Sean Watson and everybody telling him, young man, secure the football. Yeah. Secure the football is number one. Be patient when you're running the mm -hmm. football is two. And the third thing is pass protection. And the young men are starting to pass protect better, so they're getting more reps. They hang on to the football. That talent is going to show up on the field. Second and short, and they're still going to go with that tandem. In the backfield behind Joe Gans. Third straight carry. Castillo got the first down. Inside the 40, down to the 39-yard line, a pickup of five. Brandon Balkum subbing for Steve Klein at that nose tackle spot on the stop. Remember that uh, Coach Callahan is is not opposed to running 10, 12, 15 plays in a row. So right now, up front, Nebraska's getting lathered up a little bit. They're finding that bubble. If you're at home, mm -hmm. look for that bubble. The place the guard is not covered. Nebraska wants to run to that softness. In fact, Gans wants to check to that softness a lot of times. They started going to this two-back set during the Texas game. They said they like it. About four in a row. The steel just puts the head down to the 35-yard line. Pickup of four. I guess they're going to run him until he drops. Well, that was an example of that truck stick right there. Yeah. You push the button on the football video game, and you can juke people or run right over the top, and Castile could do both. Yards after contact. What does a running back do when nothing's there? Mm -hmm. And that's a, a good indication of how good a running back is, how effective. And Castile is doing a nice job on this drive. Well, Nebraska is going to call a timeout as quick as Castile will get a little breather. So the freshman four straight carries. You know, it is senior day, but we got a lot of special people here. We already talked to Bo Rude, and just a couple of moments ago, one of the greats in Nebraska baseball history, Jabba Chamberlain, now pitching for the New York Yankees, also being honored. Nebraska, an outstanding baseball program here. They play in one of the nicest fields. And just a couple of minutes ago, Jabba Chamberlain got honored. He's got a little Yankee and Nebraska cap on. 84,000 went crazy when they saw him and they played the video on the screen. And he gets the hugs from the family members. How about that? 2 0, a save. Forget about those numbers. The guy throws about 150 miles an hour. They didn't get a whole lot off him, that's for sure. No, and now with Andy Pettit. Maybe not coming back. He may be the fifth starter this year for the Yankees. A little baseball trivia there. On second down. Lucky. Running room. Inside the 30 to the 25. Another Nebraska first down. Pickup of nine on the play. 72 yards rushing now for the Huskers in this ball game. Joe Gans and Marlon Lucky run at the bubble, and you can see the cutback. Right there to the softness, the guard's uncovered. He has an opportunity to help initially in a double team and then get to that next level of linebackers, creating that softness. Now, where Nebraska has to watch out is right here. They've been driving the football. Kansas State wants to do something to come mm -hmm. up with a negative play. Andy Sand, the pullback, they give it the lucky who follows his block. Down to the 20 yard line, bounces out, down to about the 16 yard line. Pickup of nine. That's just flat out tough running by not only Lucky, but Castile. Yeah, it's just a matter of one-two with Marlon Lucky and his guys up front. And 
and Nix and Hickman and Byford and Sluin and Burks, they're all getting their blocks. They're getting up to that second level. And then right now, Marlon Lucky is not being denied. Following behind Byford, the big center from Hartsell, Alabama, who says, I can't wait to go home and get a little cook squirrel and dumplings from my grandma. Well, I think I might pass on that. <laughs> I don't want to follow behind anybody that eats cooked squirrel. Better than second, <laughs> second down is short. Lucky straight ahead down to the five. Let's take a look at the fit up front. You have a hat on a hat, and then Nebraska is moving the line of scrimmage into the secondary of Kansas State, and Marlon Lucky is running with an attitude. And that brings up first down and goal from the five-yard line. 2.16 to play in the second quarter. Lucky again. Looks for running room. Looking for the pylon as he reach. Does he get it? Touchdown, Nebraska. Nebraska right now is saying, you know, we don't believe that Kansas State can touch us. Put a hat on the hat and on the edge is J.B. Phillips, number 85, working overtime. You just cover the defense, you continue to work hard, and then you have a running back that just is simply making it happen here today. That's a good formula for Nebraska football. Just tough running by these Huskers. Wow, the people right now in Husker Nation are saying, where has this been? I know. Well, it's here today. And the extra point is perfect again. Henry is perfect down the year. Marlon Lucky with the touchdown. Let's take a look at Lowe's building towards the BCS, and we can see... How the Big 12 stacks up. The only team with four in the top 15 of any conference. Kansas, perfect 9 0. Tough game in Stillwater Day against Oklahoma State. The Sooners, the Missouri Tigers, and of course, Texas, Texas Tech meeting this afternoon. All four ranked in the top 15 of the BCS. That's yeah, pretty good. You get into that argument what's the best football conference in the nation? And the SEC has an argument as well, but I think that graphic right there pretty much tells the story wouldn't you think Ron? I, I think it does too I mean you know you can talk and people argue about tough schedules this that whatever but come on throw the big 12 in there eight plays 73 yards just over 340 for Marlon Lucky every play was a run that is amazing Castile had 38 of those yards Lucky had four carries for 35 yards and what that is called is an attitude drive yeah. 98 yards rushing now for this Nebraska team against a defense that only gives up about 126 yards rushing. That ball just blew off as the sun comes back out here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And Lucky has to be getting close to 1,000 yards on the, on the season. I only has 39, 39 here today. Nine. He's going over 900 right now if he continues on yeah. this pace. Before the, even, before the afternoon's out, he might surpass that mark. I think the way they've seen success running the football on that last drive, my goodness, you, you might want to keep with it. You know, and Callahan has had drives during the year where he's not opposed to running at a half, you know, a dozen times in a row because his offensive line starts to feel it up front. Still 2.05 to play, and you're kicking off against a very dangerous Kansas State return team. McKinney loses it, and he's going to take a knee, wisely so. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at the Nissan Heisman watch. You'll want to see who Kelly has number one. Plus, we hand out our Big 12 awards. Highlights and stats all coming up on the Nissan halftime report just in a couple of minutes. You know what's interesting, Ron, is even on that kickoff return that did not come out of the end zone, the fans in the stadium continued to cheer as Nebraska ran down to cover that kick. Every player on that kickoff coverage team went to the ball carrier. Mm -hmm. That's the effort that these yeah. fans have come to expect. Nebraska tried for their 39th consecutive winning record at home, and they need the victory today to reach that goal. 
Final two minutes, Freeman has to dump it. Not even turning around is Leon Patton. That was ugly. And Zach Potter made sure that Josh Freeman did not have any more time to let that route develop. Pressure out of Nebraska's front four, and once in a while, an extra rusher from the linebacking position has been a nightmare for Kansas State in this first half. You can see the total yards. Uh, plus 120, 118 for Nebraska. Second down and 10. Even two minutes to play here in the second. Freeman looks left, looks over the middle. Nelson's got an incomplete instead. Had it in his hand, but he was sandwiched in between a couple of black shirts, including Bo Rood. You know, Anthony West also in on that. Ron, that's what people need to understand about pass coverage. You're not going to cover the receiver all the time. But if a receiver does get his hands on the ball, immediately you have to put him to the ground. No yards after the catch. And Jordy Nelson, we saw last week, had a ton of yards after mm -hmm. the catch. Third down and long again. We'll call it 10. Nebraska backs up. They only rush four. Freeman's got time. A little slip pattern. First down, Kansas State. Johnson still on his feet. Scampers out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Pickup of 19 on the play with 146 to play. That's exactly what I was just talking about, Ron, in pass coverage. The coverage forces, forces Josh Freeman to go underneath to James Johnson. But if you tackle him, boom, right there, you take a good angle, you put him on the ground, Kansas State's putting the football right now. That was one of the first times this afternoon that Nebraska's defense has taken a poor angle. I think we saw Josh Freeman using space properly there and not trying to get the whole bundle. Here comes the blitz. Kansas State picks it up, a little fly pattern, incomplete, intended for Murphy. Intended for number 87, Nebraska Murphy, bought a, brought a bunch of players on that one, include, including Steve Octavia and the linebacker. Well, Kevin Cosgrove has a good feel right now for this Kansas State offense. The defensive coordinator from Nebraska is bringing pressure, and it's effective. It's not about bringing pressure all the time, mm -hmm. Ron. It's about when you do, you need to get in Freeman's face. And right now, Freeman is feeling that pressure. Second and 10. Murphy wide to the right. Shuttle pass to Patton. Oh, Lee Gross Cup would be happy except for the result. Came up with that Utah pass. No gain on the play. Kevin Cosgrove talked to us yesterday about the one gap responsibilities. And when you have one gap to cover, you do it. And then if you're not there to cover it, someone needs to come from the secondary and make the tackle. They've been doing neither of those things on the year thus far. Now Freeman, this time again, he dumps it in the middle, underneath. First down, caught over the 50, down to the 48-yard line is James Johnson again. That seems to be the pattern that's working for this Kansas State offense, just that crossing pattern that Freeman's showing some patience before he throws the football. And Nebraska's playing a two-deep zone, and they're playing it soft which forces Kansas State to come underneath in the pass coverage. Looks like Courtney Grixby is getting up and he's holding on to his arm. He's going to be escorted off the field. Check that it's Ricky Tenars is going off the field. Stinger maybe. With that pressure we've been seeing out of Nebraska, we need to see it again right here as Freeman's getting a feel of this game. Inside of a minute, first and ten. Here comes the pressure. Freeman reads it, incomplete pass. Nice job by Bo Rude, and he gets the crowd to chant Rude. It was intended for Jordy Nelson. And Bo Rude is one of those defenders that Nebraska has really missed. He's very talented, but it's his precision in carrying out the defense that's called. You can see it in his pass coverage. When a receiver is in his area, he is absolutely glued to him, and that was a good example of it on Jordy Nelson. Well, he had the highlight of his year was a 93-yard interception for a touchdown versus Iowa State. It hasn't played since the first series of the AM game. Second down and 10, Freeman rolling. Hit as he throws, pass to Nelson complete. Inside the 35-yard line, down to the 33. Nelson's seventh reception. He's over 100 yards. That when, covered 16. When Josh Freeman is moving to the direction Jordy Nelson is lined up, make no mistake about it, Jordy Nelson is the number one target. And you can see it on that play. Jordy Nelson going to the short corner. 
And Josh Freeman finds him a great throw considering the pressure that was in Freeman's face. 44 seconds to play. Kansas State with two timeouts. Best drive since drive number two of the ball game. Low snap, pressure. Freeman hit, dumps it, incomplete. It won't be grounding because there was a receiver there. Tier Green is the one who put the pressure on from that free safety spot. And this is the timely pressure that I'm talking about. Tier Green, number 30, perfect timing from the secondary comes free because he waits until the offensive linemen are engaged with somebody else and it gives him a free path to the quarterback. 40 seconds to play in the half. Second and 10 from the 32. Freeman steps up. Jordy Nelson, normally sure-handed, could not grab onto that one. Steve Octavian was on the coverage. Let's see if Kansas State calls their timeout. They got two left. With 35 seconds left, they'll be facing third down and 10. Freeman instead just looks over to the side. He's getting the signals. And if you're in Nebraska right here, you can't let number 27, Jordy Nelson, who's right here in the slot, hurt you. Look for Freeman to roll that way and try to find number 27. It is loud. Nebraska brings the house. Freeman running for his life. He's going to go down. He throws it away. That'll be definitely grounding. The only thing that will save him, Ron, is a fumble. He's outside the tackle box, but here comes yeah, the fight the right here. Tierre Green again. The Remember now, outside the tackle box is only one of the qualifications. It has to go beyond the line, the line of, of scrimmage right. as well, and this doesn't get there. Once again, impeccable that's timing by Tier Green. But that, Offense. That's a mistake he can't make because that was close to being a fumble. Because you saw him bobbling the ball right there. And he actually throws it out there yeah. with his left hand. I know. Great job by that. Black shirt defense again, loss of 14 on the play. And the significant thing is about the, the field goal range. That's a huge play because you don't no. get the play back. It's the loss of down as well. Mm -hmm. Now, before the game, we saw Nebraska kickers kicking 60 yarders. Nobody from Kansas State tried that. And Joe Gans, as we heard at the top of the show, telling us he wanted his team to play with fire in their belly. And in the paper earlier this week, he questioned whether some players did against Kansas. Well, you and know, even, even some of the, the, the media here said these guys had no fire against the Jayhawks last week. Well, in this team concept, and I believe football is the, the, the greatest team sport that man has ever come up with. It's amazing sometimes what ignites a team. Mm -hmm. And Joe Gans has been that ignition. Right now, the team is playing like that man has played ever since he was the the scout team offensive yep. player of the year clear back in 2004. It isn't like this is a new thing for that young man. Now he's got a lot of confidence. We talked to him yesterday. He's making only a second start. He sounded to us like he's been around a long time. Fourth down, 24 for Nebraska. And the trips bunch up to that side is probably where Freeman wants to go. And it makes Jordy Nelson one on one. It's called three Nebraska. by one. It's our second timeout this half. Kevin Cosgrove came yeah, running out on the field for Nebraska. Said, yeah. Timeout, guys, let's talk about this. He wanted to see it, but that three by one, you get three on one side, and that's a good thing, but you also get Jordy Nelson on the other side by himself. And as you mentioned before the game, Joe Gans's hope was his team came out on fire. That's what football's all about. It's just, you know, you got to play with that fire and, you know, that it just comes from within, I think. It's just, you know, that personal drive inside, you know, that drives you out there. And uh, it just it's, it just seems that sometimes we play with a lack of emotion. You know, I hope that changes, and it should on senior day. You know, it should be, you know, emotion, you know, be riding high, especially with these seniors playing the last time on this field. You know, we should have that emotion. Well, he's trying to make it three straight for the Nebraska Cornhuskers over Kansas State. They've won 18 of the last 19. You saw the numbers on him. 28 seconds left. Fourth down, 24 for Kansas State. Here comes Nebraska again on the blitz. Freeman hit, throws, has a man, but out of bounds. Anthony West was the one who put the pressure in Freeman, spending a lot of time on the turf today. 
And right now the blitz package for Nebraska is working well. It's the timing. Guys coming out of the secondary, you have to time it well because if you tip it to the offense, they're going to pick it up. And that time that pressure resulted in that pass going out of bounds when Freeman actually had a receiver open downfield. 22 seconds left. Now if you're in Nebraska, two trains of five. You got 22 seconds. We've got a pretty good lead here. Let's go for a couple more. Let's let's put a nail in the coffin. Oh, or no do you question. play or do you just play a conservative? I think you go for it. You Gans should make good decisions. You run a play if it's a good play, and then you try to finish it out. If it's not, you just run the clock out. Now he's looking down the middle. Pass caught inside the 25 to Todd Peterson. And he's saying, hurry up, guys. Let's get down here. 16 to play. And he'll kill it right here. The, the clock stops because of the first down. And so you preserve your one timeout. 31 yards on the connection between Gans and Peterson. And once again by once again by Gans, he just has a feel for what he's doing. He knows where he's going with the ball. Throw a ball your receiver can make a play on, and Peterson does just that. And he was working on Reggie Walker, the linebacker who got turned around a little bit. Peterson knew where the ball was. And right now the decision making is at, at least we have a field goal attempt. So I don't want to make a mistake. If something's there, I want to get it into the end zone. See if they throw that fade to purify. Looking right, looking left. Has some time. Ten seconds to play. Throwing into the end zone. Cut! Touchdown Peterson in Nebraska. Keeps that up, people are going to think that Jerry Taggy is back. <laughs> On this drive, Peterson two catches, 54 yards. He gets the touchdown, only his third of the year, seventh of his career. This Nebraska offense has exploded here in the first 30 minutes. Seven ticks left in the half. Nebraska smothering Kansas State, 38-10. Look where Joe Gann starts. There's nothing there. You make a good primary decision with your feet, and when a quarterback gets outside the pocket, his receivers continue to work for him, and Peterson comes up with a big play. And the reaction by Joe Gans, his third touchdown pass, he had four last week against Kansas while throwing for over 400 yards, but the difference, he doesn't have a pick this day. Wow, look at those big that? plays, seven for plus 20, for 20 or more. And Joe Gann certainly has not only the fire in his belly, but he understands what his football team needs, and quite frankly, Ron, the entire state needs this mm -hmm. kind of performance. 50 plays coming into this game, plus 20 yards for Nebraska, and you can see he's got wow. seven today. Nebraska's only led at halftime in five games this year. It has been a long time since they've led. And this is going to be the squib kick with only eight seconds left. Kansas State will cover it up. One tick goes off the clock. Ron Prince's squad is going to have to do some regrouping in the locker room. And Josh Freeman has a cannon. They're on the 40. 39 yard line he can probably throw this with the wind at his back certainly into the end zone why not he'll marry and see what happens you only have seven seconds what's the worst thing that could happen well this Nebraska team led 10 to 3 at halftime versus Texas that's the last time but that was one of only five times they had an advantage in intermission here's that three by one with Jordan Nelson down here by himself Biggest lead at halftime they had was 21-10 versus Nevada. Freeman steps up. Clock is going to run out. He is going to run out of room, and he'll go down again. This time, Barry Turner coming up with a sack. The third sack for this Nebraska defense in the opening half. They only had nine coming in the entire season. Listen to this crowd. Thousand cheering the fact that Nebraska riding a five-game losing skid 
has the advantage at halftime, 38-10. Here's Lewis Jackson. All right, thanks a lot. Coach, just give us your thoughts on Joe Gantz and the way he has led your offense in only a second start. Well, I think he's done a terrific job, but a lot of credit is due to our defense. And Courtney Grigsby he had a heck of a return on the kickoff. It sparked our team, and we're just playing emotional right now. And then how do you coach this team up to come out here and keep this up in the second half, especially just that keep, pressure defense? We just have to keep playing. That's all we need to do is try to score some more points. All right, Coach, thanks. Thank you. Run. 325 yards for Nebraska in that opening half. Joe Gans accounts for 227 of them. Three touchdowns, including this one, closing out the scoring at halftime. Huskers up by a bunch. Two, Kansas State has won only five games in Lincoln, Nebraska, including just two since 1958. And as we get set to start the second half, they find themselves down by 28 to the Huskers of Nebraska, 38-10. Well, it was Johnson, Kelly Stoffer, I'm Ron Thulin. Nebraska will get the ball to begin the second half. Rossman teeing it up. Crowd of over 84,000 on hand, hoping to see this five-game Nebraska losing streak. Longest since 1958. They hope it to be broken today. This will be five yards deep. Nebraska will take a knee. Moments ago, Lewis Johnson talked to Ron Prince of Kansas State. Well, coach on offense, your team is only averaging 3.7 yards per play, sacked three times. What's it going to take to get this offense going in the second half? Well, we've had too many balls uh, plays where the defense has penetrated the backfield immediately, and so it's really disrupted our any kind of continuity. Made some really poor decisions. Um, all that's behind us, and we've got to really put a, a good effort here in the second half, particularly here in the early in the third quarter together. And what about slowing down Joe Gantz? He has seven passes uh, of 20 yards or better. What's the difficulty in getting to him and slowing him down? Well, the biggest problem is that they can run the ball right now, and then they can pass it, and they've got a lot of balance, and that's really hurting us right now. We're going to have to be able to take one of those elements away, and that's extremely hard with a player like five, but we're going to have to do it. Thank you, Coach. Yep. And Joe Gantz comes out firing, hitting Maurice Purify again with a Another catch, another completion, his 12th of the ball game. Just the confidence that Joe Gans is throwing this football this afternoon, Kelly, is, is just remarkable. And you see right on that last pass to purify what Joe Gans does so well. He's a timing passer. That ball comes out on time. And that was a throw behind fade route. Throw it at the back of the receiver and let the receiver turn around and get it and purify with those big mitts. Yeah, going against the win. Nebraska, three down linemen, showing blitz, jumping all over the place. Gans has five to snap it. Gans is contact. Kansas State made contact in Nebraska. Let's see how the officials called it. Defense, offside, five-yard penalty, still first down. Seven penalties right now for Kansas State. Rob Jackson is one of those defensive ends that what Kansas State likes to do is when they get ahead on down and distance in particular, they use sometimes five defensive linemen at the same mm -hmm. time. Two defensive ends are really playing linebacker. Rob Jackson is one of them that jumps inside, covers the guard, moves out, tries to confuse the offense, and that time he just got a little bit ahead of himself. Lucky and Lawson will go back to that two-back set. We saw a lot of in that latter stages of quarter number two. Fake to Lucky. Gans looking down the middle. Wide open, incomplete pass. Just overthrown, intended for Terrence Nunn, the senior out of Cypress Falls High School in Houston. McKinney on the coverage, but Nunn had a step on him. One of the first times Gans has missed today, the play action pass because, as Ron Prince said, Nebraska's been so effective at running the ball. You play action. None who usually comes in motion and goes down inside and blocks that time goes down inside and then turns it upfield and is the primary receiver. Lucky and Lawson in the backfield. Second down and five. They look to slip it to Lucky. Got it. Nope, lost the football. They'll call it an incomplete pass. Added for a second and he is down and slow to get up. 
And Ron, the reason, yeah, you're right. I think it is lucky on the ground. And that was that slip screen. It happens quickly. He gets hit inside in that offensive line. That time he bobbled it and then got hammered to the ground. Now the trainer's out to check him out, and make sure they're not going to move him until they find out what's wrong with him. Ron, this third and five coming up. Nebraska hasn't been in this situation very much in the first half. They only had three third down conversions. So we'll check on his condition when we return to Lincoln, Nebraska. Third down and five, a situation Nebraska has not faced a whole lot in this ballgame, Kelly. Yeah, only three third down tries in the first half. They have to be successful in this situation. On third and five, they get it easily. Wide open. Over the 40-yard line to the 44-yard line is Terrence Nunn on the reception. That's Nunn's second catch of the ball game. Pickup of 12. Because of the lack of pressure up front by Kansas State, Kansas State's defensive pass coverage is being exposed. That's just way too easy on third and five. Nunn's the outside receiver, sets down in the zone, and you have Gans. It's already demonstrated that he mm -hmm. will find the open guy. You have to have tighter coverage than that. That's a fresh set of downs for this Nebraska offense, closing in on 350 yards already here in the ballgame. And steps up, going deep down the sideline, incomplete. Intended for Lucky. And Lucky got his win back and came and ran an out and up, a wheel route by the running back right there he was open once again and Gans just barely missed him Gans didn't miss much of those in the first half already has four catches today and he was matched up on a linebacker John Hulick the sophomore from Wichita Kansas that's a mismatch yeah and he had a step on it the ball just was a little bit too long a second down and ten will go from the I formation running game again Quinton Castile averaged almost eight yards a carry in that opening 30 minutes he's in he's impressive oh he is he's a big dude too at 6'1 245 runs a 4 5 for crying out loud how does that happen <laughs> that's like Jaworski laying down in AM. he said don't call me a fullback I'm a 275 pound which is probably yeah. a little bit light. yeah no kidding he's Tailback. a 280 pound guard that happens to line up in the back yeah, of the really. Texas AM. and not Castile Gives him third down and short. We'll call it three. This has been a problem for Nebraska more than third and long this season. Dan straight drop. Purify. Gets by his defender. Inside the 25, close to the 20 yard line. They'll mark him down at the 19 yard line. Chris Carney coming up from that free safety spot to save the touchdown. Purify is matched up on Justin McKinney, arguably the cover corner for Kansas State. It's a fade stop. Purify acts like he's going on the fade, and then as the ball's coming at his back numbers, he just turns around and turns around and plucks it out of the air. Very well executed, but Gans timing is absolutely impeccable. Three receptions for Maurice Purify today, 65 yards. He's having an outstanding afternoon and a fresh set of downs for Nebraska in the red zone again. <laughs> Gans, plenty of time over the middle, off the hands this time of Maurice Purify. So the big banana hands have the peel taken off it. Yeah, Purify knows he should have had that ball. Once oh, again, yeah. Gans reading the coverage, not just going to the right guy, Ron. It's how quickly he gets to the right guy. That's the understanding of this offense. This season, though, a lot of people on Nebraska's lineup is have been able to catch footballs. 20 Huskers have at least one reception. But Gans' favorite targets today have been Purify, Nunn, and Marlon Lucky. Second down, 10. All on the 19-yard line. Here comes the blitz. Gans steps up in the pocket, gets it to his favorite receiver again. Inside the 10, down to the 9-yard line. Marcus Watts on the coverage, but Purify again just split the D. And the key, though, the offensive line giving Gans a lot of time back there. Yeah, great protection, great understanding of the offense by the quarterback, and then the receiver, Purify, just comes in in that zone. As the inside receiver clears out, Purify has a little void in that zone. He just comes in, mm -hmm. shows his number to the quarterback, 
First down inside the 10. Nice job by Nate Swift, by the way, on that pass pattern. Kind of clearing things out so Purify could get open. First and goal. Gans, plenty of time again. This is going to be an easy touchdown for France Hardy, his second of the ball game. This is where you see the knowledge and talent of Bill Callahan, the play calling man to man, run crossing routes inside, and they form natural picks. And then the quarterback just picks up whichever receiver is open. And once again, Gann finds Hardy for the touchdown. Kansas State defense only gives up 347 yards a game. Nebraska's got 400 already this afternoon. They're averaging almost 10 yards a play. Extra point is good. Earlier in the game, we showed you Java Chamberlain, New York Yankee fame. And of course, a Nebraska Cornhusker getting a standing O from 84,000 and a hug from his dad. But of course, uh, his dad actually works at the stadium as a security guard. And Lewis is standing by with Jabba Chamberlain's pop right now. Lewis. Yeah, Ron, we're right down in the southwest corner of the stadium in the Hewitt Center. And this is the hallway, Harlan, that you've been patrolling for a while. You've been doing this for six years. But first of all, back to that moment out on the field. What was it like for you as a dad to stand out there and watch your son uh, get that honor in front of everybody? Well, it was truly an honor for me just to be there amongst the Nebraska fans as they've embraced my son through the past several years when he played here and now as a Yankee. And I got to ask you about this, uh, to stand out there with your dad. Uh, he's been working here for the last several years watching you. To go from high school to pitching here to the Yankees, what's it like? Oh, it's great, you know, to have the fans out there. And, you know, I, I am where I am because of they supported me and, and they've been here. And that's unbelievable, <laughs> by the way. Wow. And, uh, Somebody sees Harlan on TV right now, I think. That's it. That's it. But, no, it's great to be out there with him and, uh, and to know all the things that he's done for me. And uh, it's been fun. It's been fun. And what about your new manager now? Joe Girardi's in. Uh, how does that affect uh, this next season coming up for you? Um, it doesn't affect anything. You know, guys are going to come out and do the things that they've done and uh, prepare themselves. And he's been around. You know, he's been a Yankee before, and he's been a bench coach. So it's going to be good things. And you know what? I can't help but bring up this hat. This is a unique hat. You see this? We've got the Nebraska on the left side and the New York, New York side on the right side. Where did that come from? Uh, it, it was a fan from New York or the East Coast. Uh, he called me one day and just wanted to talk. And so I talked to him, and a week, 10 days later, I get this hat in the mail. Fantastic. Great to see you, sir, both of you. Congratulations on the honor. A pretty cool family affair down here in the southwest corner, Ron. All right, Lewis. Actually, that was Joe Torrey calling and saying, well, you want to drive and drive a route here in Los Angeles. <laughs> James Johnson, lone man in the backfield. He's got the football. Splits the Nebraska defense, gets up to the 40, be a yard short of the first down. Bo Rude, Armando Murillo on the stop. That's one of the adjustments that you would expect Kansas State to make in the second half with the passion that this black shirt defense from Nebraska played with in the first half. That's what you do. You let them come after Josh Freeman, and then you give it on the draw. You let them come after Josh Freeman. You dump screens over him, mm -hmm. trying to slow down that pressure from Nebraska. So you heard Ron Prince just talking about the pressure that they've seen so far in this ballgame. Just about four minutes gone by in the third. Pushki in motion. This time, Freeman straight drop. Pressure again. Deep out pattern caught. Inside the 45, down to the 42 yard line. Deion Murphy on the reception. That's his first, second catch of the game. The first one only went for seven yards. And if you are watching the game at home, that was the far hash and a deep out to the far side of the <laughs> yeah. field on an absolute frozen rope. And that's what Josh Freeman brings to the table. It's been really ineffective thus far because those Nebraska Cornhuskers have held them up in front of them, haven't allowed the big play. Freeman has to come up with them in this second half. He's thrown 31 passes, completed 15. A little screen to Nelson. Maybe picks up one on the play. Nice job defensively. Marilla was there along with a bunch of other guys from in the Nebraska Blackshirt defense. Yes, yeah, Sue and Potter and Stein Cooler. Stein Cooler. Yeah, you're right. That was great recognition when a defensive line recognizes the screen, and that was just an outside screen. They have to turn and run because you're not going to get to the quarterback anyway. Pursue down the line. And the first thing you hit that or you see that's on the opposite side of the field, you hit him. 
Well, from the eye formation with Jordy Nelson wide to the right. Johnson and Puski in the backfield. Looking for Nelson deep. Going. Has him. Overthrown just out of the outstretched arms of Jordy Nelson. Anthony Blue on the coverage, the freshman out of Cedar Hill, Texas. That's a tough cover for a freshman. Yeah, that freshman was all over Jordy Nelson. And it's really nothing fancy, just runs right by him. Jordy Nelson has a step on him. And the interesting thing, the fine line we walk between failure and success in this game, last week against Kansas, that ball is completed for a touchdown. This week it falls harmlessly to this turf. Now Daniel Gonzalez goes wide to the right. Nelson in the slot, facing third down and nine. Nebraska brings the blitz again. Freeman flush from the pocket, looking, throwing, off the helmet of Nebraska. It looked like it hit Larry Asante on the top of the head. It was intended for Deion Murphy. And Asante does a tremendous job, you're right. As Freeman breaks contain right here, he's looking downfield. He doesn't want to run the football because Octavian is going to see to it that he doesn't. But the good coverage by Asante it hits him right in the back of the head. Oh, Nate Swift is standing at his 10-yard line awaiting the punt. Tim Rayer. He's a great guy watch list semifinals last year. Tries to pooch this up. Looking for his 17th to stop inside the 20, and he'll be able to do that. Nice job. 32 yards on the kick, but it was effective for Ron Prince's Wildcats. They still trail, though, by a bunch. 45-10 here in the third. A little field shot there. The Huskers still lead it, even from that angle, 45-10. to 10. Here's the Aflac Home versus Away Trivia Challenge. Ticks 1, 2, or 3 to 8, 3, 7, 7, 8, 7 for your chance to win a plasma TV or a trip to the Hula Bowl. The question, 11-year history of the Big 12. How many have the Wildcats and Huskers combined to win as far as the North Division titles? Six, seven, or eight? Well, we'll give you the answer coming up in just a little bit. Well, the last time Nebraska was backed up like this, they were able to put points on the board. Now, Gans completes up to the 15, to the 17, to the 19-yard line. Terrence Nunn on the reception. That's one of the great stories, too, because Terrence Nunn came here as a freshman. When Bill Callahan got here, he had already committed to Wisconsin. Bill Callahan told Turner Gill, we got to get this guy. He's got to come with us. Started as a true freshman. And Nunn is that great compliment on the other side to Marcus Purify. A very good one-two punch that really hasn't been heard of a lot this year, but the last couple of weeks are starting to show up as a pair. Second down and very short. Steal a hit right at the line of scrimmage. I don't think he got the first down. John Hulick coming up from that linebacker spot. They call him Little Wally because he reminds everybody of Matt Waller's status on the coaching staff of Kansas State. Well, they're saying it's a first down. Wow, that was a good spot. A but it's spot. also a, probably the first bad decision that Castile has made. And a young running back, when you only need a short amount of yardage, you have to get that first down first and foremost. You don't cut it back at a time like that. I don't believe it, but they're actually doing the wave here. Why, I think, I think that's. Why be do you not believe that? That's a 15-yard penalty. I'm sorry. You don't like the wave? No. It Come went on, out, man. It went out when I started losing my hair. <laughs> Spoil sport, huh? On first down, Gans going to run an option. Something they haven't done today. Able to pick up one, possibly two. With more on the wave, our expert of the wave. Here's Lewis Johnson. Yes, waving expert. But listen, there's some significance here because before the game, I was outside the stadium buying a sweatshirt for one of my kids, and I asked him how sales were going, and he said, this week it's great because it's the last weekend. But in previous weeks by halftime, he said that bridge that leads from the stadium across the freeway was full of people leaving the stadium. But they're not leaving this week. It's they're here because of what's happening on the field. So the wave has some significance in terms of these fans there finally, finally getting what they want. Right now, it looks good <laughs> at 45-10 with more to play. That's right. Gans looking over the middle. Caught. First down again. Maurice Purify. An outstanding effort again by Purify, the senior out of Eureka, California. And it's not like it's bad coverage by Way Cheatham. Number, Ray Cheatham, number 23. But that big body of Purify, 
between the defender and the ball, and he just absorbs it when it gets there. That's exactly what this offense has not had consistently throughout mm -hmm. this year. One touchdown in each of the last four games for Purify. He's now in the top five as far as receiving yards here at Nebraska. This afternoon, 97 yards on five receptions. First down, and Gans wants more. Here comes the rush. He's going deep. Overthrown. Pass intended for Hardy. I tell you, they, they want to make sure that, okay, <laughs> Kansas put seven and six on us. We're going to hang something, as Barry Switzer used to say, we're going to hang a half a hundred on these guys. Yeah, Gans certainly hasn't been bashful. When there's been an opportunity down the field, that young man is no. going for it. We kind of got that sense in yeah. and, and Lewis talked to him yesterday. Why not? Yeah. Let it loose. See, have some fun and see what happens. He was not tight, to say the least. Second down and 10. Gans, the lucky. Lucky, nice couple of moves. Gets over midfield down to about the 49 and a half yard line. Brandon Balkum with his third stop of the afternoon for Kansas State. It's the first time we've seen that little wrinkle in the running game. and. And make no mistake about it that Gans does not want to run the football. And more importantly, Callahan and Watson on the offensive play calling side, they don't want to expose Gans to big hits because remember, he's basically it at this point in time with Sam Keller out. Gans 333 yards passing today, no interceptions, four touchdowns. Third down. Just about three, 6.50 to play in the, in the third quarter. Gans looking, throwing, another first down at the 30-yard line, out of bounds. Nate Swift with the reception, the junior out of Hutchinson, Kansas. He's over 100 receptions for his career now. Once again, just the stop fade, and what that means is the receiver is acting like he's just gonna continue to go deep. And at a certain point in time on the field, in this case, Enough to yardage to pick up that first down. Out comes the ball, and then the receiver turns around and snatches it. 100 career receptions for him, number three in Nebraska history. And his best game since Texas a couple of weeks ago, and another first down on the 39 yard line. Another just great drive by Nebraska, and this is going to be another touchdown for Franz Hardy, his third of the ball game. Hardy had no touchdown receptions this year coming into this game. Four for his career. He's got three today. Gans has thrown five. Callahan is doing a great job of not only play calling, but formationing to create favorable matchups. And then Gans is executing everything that Bill Callahan wants. Find the open guy, deliver the ball, get the ball into the end zone. Alex Henry. With the extra point. We talked about Joe Gans finding the open guy, and this time it was Hardy. Joe Gans understands this offense. He knows where to go with the football. Doesn't have a strong arm, but he's a very accurate arm. Remember the fire in the belly? It's old hat now. Look at that. Ah, touchdown. I'm not going to waste the time running down the field. Been a very difficult week for that man, Bill Callahan. Rumors of him being asked to resign. He has denied that. The school denied it. Pressure because of the five game losing streak. Future still in doubt. I think that's a realistic fact. Dr. Tom Osborne saying we're going to wait till the end of the year, but a little redemption this afternoon here in Lincoln before a sellout crowd of over 84,000. McKinney losing the handle and he's going to take a knee. The return game has been non existent for Kansas State today. Well, the big story is the quarterbacking of Joe Gans. Bill Callahan said he was a patient guy, knew he could do it. To have him come in, though, under the situation and circumstances that he did last week against Kansas and play so well just speaks volumes, not only as a player, but as a person, because that's a special quality that it takes to come off the bench on the road against the number eight team in the country and throw up 400 yards. Uh, I just commend him in every regard and every respect uh, for his performance and uh, basically for his character as a person. He showed it yesterday to us. Yeah, he did. Very personable young man. Kansas State, they're in a big hole. 
Still over six minutes left in this quarter. And there's that run defense that has been less than stellar for this Kansas State team. Prior to that carry, they had only seven, 10 yards on 17 carries. And one thing that Ron Prince told us last week is they weren't running with authority, and they really weren't running well until the second half of a ball game, and only when they were leading. You want me to get up on my soapbox right now? Sure. Not if you want to run the ball successfully, you have to be committed to the run, and this team hasn't shown that. So you can't complain about not running the ball in situations where you want to if you're not doing it between the 20s effectively. Jordy Nelson on the reception. It's a good point. I mean, you have to be committed to it. That doesn't mean you're going to run the ball 10 times in a row, but the guys up front have to get a feel for it. Just like other players, the quarterback in his position has a feel for it. The guys up front get a feel for run blocking. It's an attitude. They come off the ball in a different way than pass blocking. You can't ask them to pass block 10 times in a row and then run the football effectively. It doesn't happen all that well. First and second down on runs. They've always seemed to come up short. Here comes the blitz again on Freeman. He's able to complete the pass. Over the 40 up to the 42 yard line. Tuesday at 10.30 Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Pacific Time. The sports world has gotten a wake up call. Five time any winner Dennis Miller is on versus. And every week he takes an uncommon look at everything sports. From Title IX to jacked up athletes, nothing is off limits. Plus, do you have something to say? You too can be a guest on the show, uh, sort of. Got a question? Dennis wants to give you the answer. Find out more at versus.com slash ask Dennis. Might be able to be on the show. Freeman looks left, throws right. Nothing doing. The black shirt defense led by Armando Murillo there to corner Deion Murphy. And Murphy's not an easy guy to corner, and Murillo is one of those young, somewhat inexperienced defensive backs that's doing a nice job today. We saw him in on the play before. It comes up limping a little bit on that play. But that's exactly what you have to do against Kansas State. Let them catch the ball in front of you, but then come up and make the tackle. Nebraska has tackled well this afternoon. Third down and six. Nebraska leading 52 to 10. Kansas State's only led a couple of times in this game. Hatton. Left side looks for a block. Big guys in front of him. Gets a couple of blocks into Nebraska territory. Marked out at the 45-yard line. Ron, you can see Nebraska was sneaking pressure up mm -hmm. on the right side, and that pass was a, or that play was a quick pitch to the left. That was a perfect play for what Nebraska was running defensively. Pick up a 15 on the play, and looking down at the Nebraska defense, Armando Murillo, two plays ago, seemed like he got the wind knocked out of him. He doesn't seem like he's all together still on that. He's on the field. Well, as a quarterback, you need to be aware of that, or yeah. someone needs to make you aware of that. But right now, Kansas State doesn't even have a wide receiver to his side of the field. And the tight ends, and they're going to run the football. It's a scrum right at the 45-yard line. Zero gain. Well, Kansas State looking to run the football a little bit right in this point in time of the game. And remember, Ron Prince is a former offensive lineman. He has that mentality. His off he wants his offense to have some type of running game presence, and he hasn't been happy with it. But he's the first one that will understand you have to be committed to it to be effective at it. Freeman running for his life, throws this up for grabs, passes caught. What a hit, though. Deion Murphy out of the reception, but Larry Asante, they call him the assassin, lowered the boom on him, but he was able to hold on. Asante actually could have made probably a better play on the ball. The ball's in the air a long time. Asante on Murphy right there. Go for the ball at the same time you go for that big hit. Right at the other end, you can mm -hmm. see there was an opportunity with the ball up high to come in with that right hand and just tomahawk. Pick up a 17 on the play. First and 10 inside the 30 now for Kansas State. It is loud. Three-step drop. Freeman looks. Pass. Knocked away. Intended for Murphy. Penalty flag is thrown. It's going to be Amarillo. I think it was the proverbial hand on the back. As he tried to reach over. A hand on the back, maybe arrived just a little bit late on the slant to Murphy. Pass interference. Number five defense. Spot foul. First down. 
You know what's interesting too Ron is we haven't seen or heard much of Jordy Nelson in this second half. That's a good sign for Nebraska because step number one is to take Jordy Nelson away and make Freeman go to somebody else like on this play. Nelson had only two catches so far here in quarter number three. First penalty of the second half for Nebraska 3 2 to play in the third 52 to 10. First and 10 from the 17 Pusky in motion. About a little reverse. Freeman looks to throw the block. He does. This may be a touchdown. No. Nice job defensively. They closed quickly, but not before a pickup of 13 by Deion Murphy. Kansas State will bring this out, particularly in the red zone. They like to shake it up down there a little bit. Freeman getting out in front. A nice block right there. Ron, that's a quarterback, by the way. It happens to be a 6'6", 250 pound quarterback but you still have to have the desire nice play nice position on the field for that play. first and goal for Kansas State it's been a while since they threatened how about back in the first quarter Freeman keeps it leans forward he's got the touchdown only the second touchdown of the afternoon for Kansas State Ron, remember how Kansas State opened the game on that touchdown pass to Jordy Nelson? Balance during that drive. That's exactly what we saw on this drive. Balance. Freeman finishes it, but it was balance getting them down there. Rossman for the extra point. And he'll sneak it in that left upright. Now we've got a moment. Let's take a look at the Kawasaki Conference leaders. But passing, you know, back in the old days of the Big 12 or Big 8, we'll go back there. 284 may have led. Now you're number oh, three. Yeah, it's called evolution. The evolution <laughs> of the game of football. You have to put it in the air. You have to pressure defenses by the pass, spread them out, and good things happen. I mean, Texas Tech, look at those numbers. That's just outrageous. 382 <laughs> yards passing for Nebraska this afternoon. Last week, Gans threw for 405 yards and four touchdowns. He's got five touchdowns. How about nine touchdowns and almost 800 yards in two weeks? Yeah, and, and the big difference is no mistakes. No, he no had turnovers. four interceptions yeah. last week. He's been almost flawless today. Those are Graham Harrell numbers, aren't they? The Texas Tech. Oh, yeah. Ron Prince, doesn't matter what the score is. Here is part of the reality, too, for Coach Prince. I mean, he thought his team, in his words, what he told us on uh, Wednesday, they get it. He was glad they were coming to this hostile atmosphere. He said, we've got to do that to go to the next level. But the problem is, you still have Missouri and Fresno State. Unless you pull off a miracle today, your bowl implications are riding on today and the rest of the season. This is Andre Jones on the return. Well, you take a look wow. at the last eight possessions. Now, last week, Kansas scored on 10 consecutive possessions against this Nebraska Ooh. defense, 10 touchdowns. I think Nebraska's kind of returned the favor wow. to Kansas State. Yeah, and what a response by this entire team, the young men. You're talking about 18 to 20-year-olds, and that represents an incredible response to the trials and tribulations this program has been experiencing. And like Joe Gans told us yesterday, and we, we heard on tape today, that it's about, you know, there isn't anyone that cares more about this program than the players in the program. We can't lose sight of that, and we see that today. Jordy Nelson looks like he's a little banged up. The ice pack on the, on the right hip, and he's riding the bike. That's why we haven't heard from the young man. Only two receptions in the second half, and with 2.42 to play in the third, Nebraska takes over. Now they're saying it's a, it's a heating pad on there. Whatever, he's getting some treatment. Terrence Nunn on the reception. He led the team last year with 42 catches. Came into this game with 26. He's got four today, so he's got 30 on the year. Well, the significance that it's not an ice pack versus a heating pad. A heating pad means he still wants to come back in the game. When ice starts showing up on your body, you're done. Yeah, really. First and 10 again. 25 first downs for Nebraska in this ballgame. We still haven't hit the fourth quarter. And steps up in the pocket, rifles it over the middle, passes caught by Nate Swift. 
down to the 35-yard line, and again, that ball was right on the money. We've seen that so many times today, and it doesn't really matter who's at the receiving end. This time it's Swift running a post route inside. The dual release kind of confuses the coverage, but the post route, and, and at the end of the day, that was still a very narrow window, but what an accurate, nice throw by Gans. 28 yards on the reception for Swift. Eight different receivers have caught balls today from Nebraska. Gans, this time he's got pressure, loses the football, but regains it, but it was way back at the 47-yard line. Now we're getting a little chippy. Ian Campbell, who was so outstanding last year and as, uh, becoming first team all Big 12, had four fumble recoveries this year already, trying to get his fifth. And Ian Campbell is in that 3-4 has moved to the outside linebacker position with Klein gone from gone from that nose tackle. We were told he was going to play more defensive end today. That's just a quick rush inside, and it was effective, but it was the first time it was effective on the day. That's their first sack of the day for this Kansas State defense. Had no sacks against Iowa State last yeah. week. Straight drop back, Gans. Incomplete, intended for Purify. A little low on the throw. I think Purify was glad that that ball was low <laughs> because the safety was fi fixing to peel some paint off his helmet. I think you're right. 52 17. He should just. Tuned in. That is the correct score. Kansas State led 7 0. Courtney Grixby took a kickoff back 94 yards to tie to 10. Kansas State kicked the field goal to go up three, and since then it's been all Nebraska. Dan's on third and 20. Going deep. That's going to be out of bounds. Intended for Hardy, who's had a sensational afternoon. That was nice coverage by Justin McKinney, number 22, on Hardy. Hardy was. Running the fade route, really a go route, but just didn't give his quarterback all that much room on that play. Well, Nebraska is going to have to kick it away. They haven't done that since the opening drive of this football game. Oh, they're going to go for it. Fourth down and 20. Nebraska, talk about confidence. Fourth down and 20, and Bill Callahan is not going to call off the charges on this. And straight drop, steps up, has plenty of time. He's got running room and could get the first down, and he does. We talked about him having Chicago toughness. This is the essence of Chicago toughness right here. It's not only third and tw fourth and 20 and he needs to pick up a first down but watch at the end this is Chicago tough and attitude don't run out of bounds Chandler number 21 if you want to come up and tackle me I'll show you a little something that's Chicago tough a gain of 23 yards on the play there's going to be criticism though realistically why are you up 52 17 and go for it explain it to us Kelly I guess I explain it with, with this why not what do you have to lose at this point in time, Ron? I know, I know that you understand that, but right now, Coach Callahan needs to find a way to have these players get back to the love and the fun of the game, and that's a good example of it. Fourth and 20, hey, let's go for it. Now, if they're not up that big, you know, they obviously probably punt it away, but right now it's about having a good time on the football field for the first time in a long time. Now we take a look at the Big 12 North standings, and Nebraska was supposed to contend for the Big 12 North with Missouri. Gary Pinkle, this team has done a great job this year. Eight and one on the year, the only loss in the Big 12. Coming to Oklahoma, Kansas perfect at five and zero. Oh. They lead the Big 12 North. Kansas State had an outside chance of getting it, especially after they beat Texas. But as we told you, since the Texas game, they've alternated wins and losses. This time, Gans is going to be dropped at the 25-yard line by Ray Cheatham, the junior from El Dorado, Arkansas. And another good sign for Nebraska. Ray Cheatham represents probably the fifth, maybe sixth guy coming after Gans. And remember, 
Kansas State is all about pressure. Pressure on defense sets the table for this entire team, not just defensively, but the entire team. The pressure numbers, force takeaways, short fields, your offense benefits, but Nebraska's had none of it today. Second down and 12 for Nebraska. Final 30 seconds here, quarter number three. Hands goes to the safety valve. Lucky, nice little juke move. I tell you what, that, that's about a deep cleater there. You better break down and make a nice poor tackle on these Nebraska running backs, or they'll shake something loose on your body parts right there. Hulek just has no shot when Marlon Lucky makes the second and sometimes the third move on that play. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. And it was a good one for Nebraska. They led 38 to 10 at the end of the second. Now it's 52, 17, one quarter left. For the only fifth time this season, Nebraska heads to the fourth quarter with the advantage, and it's a big one. 52, 17, final 15 minutes from senior day in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's been the Joe Gann Show. Here's Marlon Lucky. Looks to pass it. Throws off the hands of Sean Hill, the intended receiver. We have a penalty flag thrown. Now he threw a touchdown pass to Hill versus Iowa State. They tried to do it again there. And it's going to be against Nebraska, it looks like. Yeah, hold inside. Trying to give Lucky that short Holding. corner. 59 offense, declined, fourth down. Red Biker, the senior center. It looks to me like Callahan's going to go for it again. It's only fourth and two. Coming into this game, fourth down, they were nine of 16, so they aren't afraid to gamble. And the way that Nebraska has been running the football today, but you would think, obviously, Kansas State knows that. Maybe Nebraska wants to try to get outside right here in some form. They're one for one today on fourth down. That was the Gans scramble. Lucky behind Gans. He's going to pass it. Looks, throws to Purify. First down. Inside the five, down to the three-yard line. Maurice Purify, six catch today. He's over 100 yards. And right now, Joe Gans and Marcus Purify, they're acting like they're practicing a seven-on-seven -seven drill. Yeah. That passing drill without a pass rush, the impeccable timing right there. The ball's on its way before Purify turns around. You throw it right at the middle of the numbers on the back of the receiver. But it has to be great timing because the coverage hasn't been bad. Look at that, man. School record passing yards, total yards. Joe Gans and only his second start. He's not done yet. No, I don't think he's coming out. And he's going to throw. He's going to scramble. Looking, wisely just runs out of bounds. That's a heads up play. One of the things, too, that Nebraska was telling us that about Joe Gans is he's able to take coaching. We were talking to Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator yeah. yesterday. Even when things got a little hairy last week, even in the heat of battle, he was able to take coaching. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but as a former quarterback, oh, yeah. that's huge. I totally understood what Sean was saying because in the heat of the moment, sometimes it gets quite foggy down there, and it's hard to make adjustments and learn from that. Now, you can go to the film room and learn once the bullets start stop flying, so to speak, but the good players take coaching on the field and make adjustments right away. Well, Kansas State's going to call a timeout. 14-24 to play in the ball game. The Huskers on their way to snapping a five-game losing streak. Nebraska threatening again, already leading 52-17. Quentin Castile now in the lineup, the true freshman out of LaPorte, Texas. Had 102 yards rushing versus Oklahoma State. He's had a couple of big ones today. Three-step drop, the pump fake, thrown into the end zone, wide open. Touchdown, Nebraska. Terrence Nunn. And Terrence Nunn is going to get the celebration penalty for spiking the football. But at this point in time, you know what? It's time to let loose. Get the dust off your back and have a good time. And Mark Rick wanted Georgia to do that a couple of weeks ago. 
said go out and celebrate guys and that's exactly what happened here and purify runs a slant inside none starts inside and goes up and are out and up outside and he's wide open spike the football have a good time get back to the love of the game for crying out loud that's his first touchdown reception of the year for none that was a 74 yard drive 12 plays which has been the mo today for nebraska long drives not very much time that took just under three and a half probably the sorest person that's going to have to take an ice bath is going to be alex henry his legs got some work today and he's perfect on the year has not missed a pat Let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Lewis. Well, Ron, as the uh, big plays continue for Nebraska, the playmaker for Kansas State continues to struggle with an injury. Uh, looking at Jordy Nelson as he's working out on the bike, pedaling backwards, and he's been working it so hard that he actually broke the pedal on the left side of the bike. So it was first Nelson that was injured. Now the bike, they had to retake the thing. But Jordy Nelson with that heating pad on the right hip, we don't have any specific information. And you just got to believe that that really has been such a major problem for them oh, offensively yeah. and trying no to get question. something going as Nebraska fans continue to celebrate this route here. You know it's a bad day when you're actually exercised by the brakes on the sideline. Huh? No question. That's time to start packing it in. But Lewis is exactly right. Jordy Nelson represents that big play opportunity and the way that this Kansas State offense currently is being efficient. And when he's not in there and he's not right, Kansas State has some clear issues. Kansas State has been very special to the Nebraska program because back in 76, Nebraska beat Kansas State. That was the school's 500th win. In 2006, Nebraska beat Kansas State. That was the school's 800th win. And today, this score is probably going to hold up. It'll break a five-game losing skid. Now, because of the penalty, Alec is going to have to kick from his own 15-yard line. Still gets a pretty good kick away. This will be back to the 10-yard line. It's going to be bobbled by McKinney. Heads to his right, looking for some blocking. Not going to get it. Not taking advantage of the penalty in the kick. Well, the uh, question again in the Big 12 Conference, how many North Division titles have the Wildcats and Huskers combined to win? And the correct answer is eight number three did you have that right yes you did not <laughs> look at these percentages though uh sam's coming up with too many hard questions tune in to next saturday's game on versus to find out the winner will get a chance to win a plasma tv and the grand prize trip to the hula bowl in hawaii january 12th, 12th we will be there those were our lowest by far percentages on the year mm -hmm. 14.09 to play. Kansas State has the football. What does Kansas State try to prove here? I mean, you see them running the football, something they haven't done effectively, although they are better than they were at halftime. They're averaging about two yards a carry now. But Ron Prince, what is he looking for at this point of the game, being down by a bundle? Well, remember, you have to keep in mind that Ron Prince is still trying to build a program at Kansas State. We're talking about year two for, for this new head coach. And so he wants to continue to do the things that are going to be the staples of winning football down the road. Running the football effectively is one of those staples. Freeman getting pressure again. Getting caught from behind. He's going to be dropped at the 18-yard line. The fourth sack for this Nebraska defense. And we can't tell it enough. They had only nine coming into this game total. Murillo gets there and also Kevin Dixon 97 Cosgrove has been waiting for this pressure to show up It isn't like they're doing anything different today. They're just executing the defense better than they have in the past Now there's been some speculation or discussion of whether Cosgrove has brought enough pressure on the year They brought, brought pressure early against Texas, but seemed to get away from it late in the game and it gave Texas mm -hmm. the chance to get back into it four sacks today that's equal 40 yards and losses Freeman pass complete to Mastrud he's going to be well short of the first down and they'll face a fourth down situation you know we saw Kevin Cosgrove there one of the problems these coaches especially Kevin Cosgrove and some of the other coaches that have young kids have faced this, this week people have actually had other children 
say some sly remarks to their kids. They've taken a lot of grief from parents and kids alike here in Nebraska. Small percentage of Nebraska people do that. The rest of them have a lot more class. 37 yards on the kick, not a whole lot on the return by Andre Jones. Well, Josh Freeman talking it over with his coach. Has not been a good day. Twelve oh seven left to play in the ball game. Nebraska up 59-17. A record-setting day for Joe Gans, just in his second start. He was actually part of Bill Callahan's first recruiting class. Oh, there is a deep cruncher there, John Hulick. That's a denture check, but it's still a reception. Dan Erickson, 26, taking it on the chin, but catching the football as a quarterback. Take the hit, but don't let loose of that ball. Dan, a senior out of Omaha, part of senior day today. How about Mississippi State beating Alabama? Oh, my. Oh, the shine has gone off Coach Saban today. LSU beat Alabama twice, last week and this and week. You're exactly right on that. Rest of scores from around the country. I can't believe that one. Dan still throwing, tossing away, down the middle. Purify inside the 25, down to the 20-yard line. Murray's Purify seventh catch this afternoon. Mike Gans, Joe Gans' dad likes what he sees. He should like what he sees. There's no question about it. And Gans is finding the open guy, throwing it accurately, throwing it on time. You can see Gans' head started to the right side. Significant because that's where the eyes drew the safety. And there's Mr. Gans reacting. That's my son out there getting his opportunity to play. Mike loves everything that he sees today. 488 yards throwing the football today for Joe Gans. I'm going to nominate him, uh, Commissioner Beebe, for Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week. This time he throws it out of the flat, passes spot inside the 15. Again, it's Dan Erickson. His seventh catch of the year. The senior on senior day. Yeah. Getting the rock a couple times on this drive and. That's really what I think brought the, the fire and the passion back to today because Joe Gann said at the top, he said it to us yesterday, that it was about sending the seniors out with mm -hmm. a good taste in their mouth. Guys that have sweat equity into this program, you want them to feel good about themselves as they walk out the door. Guys did not want to be the type of player that says we're the ones that really stunk it up in 2007. Gann's looking into the end zone. Touchdown! Todd Peterson. <laughs> 21 completions of 10 plus yards for Joe Gans. <laughs> 510 passing yards, seven touchdowns for the junior from Palace Heights, Illinois, the Chicago suburb. People at Amos Alonzo Stag High School are cheering for this man. And the extra point is good. Once again, Ron, Joe Gantz finding the open guy in the end zone. Being patient. Watch right at the top. Nothing's there. Move around a little bit. Be patient. Find Peterson in the back of the end zone. Joe Gans is enjoying himself today. Find those big linemen, and Mike Gans certainly likes what his son is doing on the field today. Twenty of thirty completions by Joe Gans, ten plus yards. Ten are for twenty plus yards. You get the sense, Kelly, that. Bill Callahan has the number 76 stuck in his brain right now, and he wants to get that, but does that offset <laughs> last week's 76? That's the question of the day, and quite frankly, it's probably a question for Dr. Tom Osborne to ask. We have shown you Mike Gans. It has been a big day for the dad, and he's standing by with Lewis Johnson. Lewis. All right, thanks a lot, Ron. Well, Mike, how do you describe what you witnessed here today by your son? I don't know. I'm just very, so proud of him. He's worked so hard, and, and you know, we really needed a win, and uh, they just did a great job. The offensive line, the receivers, everybody. Just what, so proud of them all. What about the way he bounced back? Think about last week what they suffered in Kansas and having the most points dropped on them ever, but to be able to come back and lead his team the way he has today. 
you know, they're, they're just trying to get two wins. And uh, what is it about him that is a, makes him do this? He's, a, he's, he's there for his teammates. Yeah. He just wants to he wants to do good for him. And that's all. That's all. Mike Joe told us yesterday that he remembers you coming home from uh, work and he said you throw the whipper ball to him until his hands were almost raw. What do you remember about those days and did you see this type of ability in him at a young age? Uh, yeah, but I don't know. I, I just did everything I could and I, I enjoyed it probably more than he did. I just loved doing it with him and that was it. Uh, he's a great kid. And, and you have a little bit of quarterbacking experience in your life also back in Western Illinois for one year. Uh, what's it like to watch him uh, maybe live out to uh, maybe at a higher degree than what you were able to do? Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. I, I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. That's just, it's unbelievable. And I guess finally, I've been watching all the high fives and the signals you've been getting here from the other parents. And what's it like to, to watch this Red Nation it, it be excited for you as a family as your son has led the team uh, to, to break this slide? Well, you know, we've been to every home game since he's been here for four years supporting everybody and now they're supporting us and we, we just appreciate it we really do so all right there's some humility there for you Robert he's a proud papa congratulations Thank sir. You very much all right and he should be Freeman being rushed has to dump it off this is Deion Murphy he's got some running room going down the sideline will he get paid hurt? no stop short of the goal line they'll put him at the one yard line but not before he scampered 66 yards Murphy coming on the crossing round, and even though Freeman gets pressure, he gets rid of the pressure to the right side just as Murphy is coming into his view. And then Murphy, remember, is that big play speed guy from Kansas State that we haven't heard of much today. Ricky Tamarsh looked like he had a pretty good angle on him, but Murphy just flat out ran away. You can see over 100 yards, five receptions for Deion Murphy. Johnson and Pushki now from the I felt formation. They fake it. Looking, throwing into the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas State. Brent Allstaff. The junior out of Hayes, Kansas, his first catch of the year, and it goes for six. Kansas goes to the play action pass. The first play down deep in the red zone on the goal line. It shows the ineffectiveness in the run game but a very well executed play action pass in the passing game. Allstead only his second career catch, by the way. First touchdown of his career. So Allstead gets his name in a book. Four plays, 80 yards, just under a minute. Well, we have to talk about the BCS standings. Ohio State, they have obviously the game with Michigan looming, playing Wisconsin today, LSU at 8-1, Oregon. Mike Bellotti has done a great job. Dennis Dixon seems to be okay, his leg, but Mark Mangino of the Oklahoma Sooners, Missouri Tigers, all in a position if anybody yeah. ahead of them falters. Yeah, Oklahoma's in a nice position. Kansas and Missouri are going to, one of those are going to be eliminated because they play each other in KC to end the season. So you know that one of those are going to go away. Mm -hmm. But the Big 12, very well represented, and there's a lot to happen. Ohio State has to go to the big house to end the year. So anything can happen in the BCS standings before the year is done. And of course, the Big 12 championship game, December 1st, 7 o'clock at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Right now, if it ended today, it'd be Kansas and Oklahoma. I think Oregon, though, they have played one of the most difficult yeah. schedules, and they've handled it quite well. Kudos yeah. to Mike Pilotti and company. They've really gotten through the big boys already in the Pac-10, so they're in a very good position. Since Nebraska returned a touchdown or returned a kickoff, now is Paul, the true freshman, no place to go. They'll take over with 9.57. You know, we were kidding about it a, a few minutes ago. Do you think that Nebraska and the coaching staff has 76? As you can see, most points ever scored by the Huskers versus Kansas State. Do you think they have 76 on their mind? I don't know. I think there might be something slightly symbolic about that. I don't know that the 76 from last week is nullified by the 76 this week, but make no mistake about it that Bill Callahan understands the significance of demonstrating that I think he's in control. They can score points here in Lincoln. Can they defend here in Lincoln? And is, he's the, is he the one to take mm -hmm. this program into the future? Well, Bo Davis is now a quarterback, the junior from Venice, California. They don't want to play Patrick Witt, who's probably the 
Next in line as Lucky continues to run straight ahead. It'll be a pickup of about 10 because Witt's a true freshman out of Wiley, Texas. But they got to get Davis some kind of reps here. You can see Sean Watson over there behind Bill Callahan, but they want to give him some reps just in case because with one game left against Colorado, you don't want to burn Witt's redshirt with one game left. Yeah, and remember that you see Sam Keller sitting behind Joe Gans right there, but Bo Davis might be called on. Nebraska, with all the negativity that's been surrounding this program and this team, they still have an opportunity to go to a bowl game if they can win out and win their sixth game. Well, here's Lucky on first down. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Well-deserved uh, time off now for Joe Kans. Taking over for Sam Keller, who was injured a couple of weeks ago. And that's a great time as a player, especially a quarterback. If you've had a record-setting day, you've gotten your team off the off the canvas. They needed a big performance, and Joe Gans provided that. And now he gets to set over on the sidelines and take it all in with the teammates that his dad talked about him supporting all of his years here at the University of Nebraska. Well, now this, the entire second team offensive line is in for Nebraska. Three redshirt freshmen, a junior, and only one senior. We are in Lincoln, Nebraska. It is senior day. A crowd of 84,000 have been on hand to see Nebraska wipe out that five-game losing skid. They are beating Kansas State 66-24, along with Kelly Stafford, Lewis Johnson. I'm Ron Thulin. Glad you're with us today. It has been the Joe Gans Show. Joe Gans has thrown seven touchdown passes, 510 yards for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And what is amazing, you look at this field, nobody has left. Most stadiums, people will be booking it that now. Pass into the flat to Erickson. He's got the first down. Erickson with three catches today. Had only five coming into this afternoon. And Java Chamberlain giving kudos to Joe Gans, as he should. Java Chamberlain knows how to locate the fastball, and that's what Gans has done this afternoon. Yeah. He has been absolutely on target the entire day. And then you go find those big bulls. That, that's a sign of a quarterback has an understanding. Those are the guys that get it done. Go give them a hug, a pat on the back. Let them understand that you appreciate what they did with them. Lucky just got tripped up as he crossed the 50-yard line by Reggie Walker, or he could have taken it to Pater. He needs to, Gans needs to take the big fellas down to Misty's get a couple sides of beef down there tonight. Well, we did that a little bit last night. Nebraska's pep band came in and <laughs> extremely loud, by the way, but it was very, very neat to hear. But, you know, even there, and we were kind of talking about it this morning, usually when the band comes into the restaurant, people stand up and they're cheering. Last night it was kind of subdued. Yeah, a little subdued. It was a, a pretty good temperature gauge of this program mm -hmm. right now, but I guarantee if we went there tonight, things would be happening. Well, there's still some very difficult decisions ahead for Tom Osborne and as interim athletic director. Marlon Lucky gets the first down inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Gabe Cruz, the redshirt freshman out of Jonesboro, Georgia, his first tackle of the afternoon, and it's a first down again for Nebraska. Ron, you talked to me about that big eight, now the, the big 12. What does Nebraska need to do? What are your thoughts about it? You don't necessarily have to name names, but what position is Dr. Tom Osborne in? I think he's in a position that, number one, he's one of the smartest and uh, most logical men I've ever met in my life. And I think he's going to make whatever decision that will be the correct decision. I, I think he takes all the facts. Marlon Lucky breaks to the outside. Is he going to go inside the 10 down to the 8-yard line? I think that Dr. Osborne will vote to keep Marlon Lucky next year. Yeah, I think you're right. And some of these backup offensive linemen may be around as well. And that's what it comes down to. I think the focus needs to be back on the young men on the field that are doing such a great job of continuing to fight through all this negativity. And they come out and have a performance like they did today. And Marlon Lucky really epitomized that with his tough running in the first half in particular. Saw the numbers on Lucky this afternoon. Give it to him again. Bounces to the outside, cuts back in, gets to the six, and then he stood up on the play. Nebraska in the red zone today, five for five, four touchdowns. That's 13 for their last 13 in the red zone. Lucky's had a big day. Six catches, 78 yards, 14 rushes, 96 yards. 
Already had over 1,300 yards total offense, and that may be it for Mr. Lucky today. Come on, get him 100 yards rushing. Come on, he only needs four. Those are up five and a half to play. Second down and goal. Steel inside the five yard line. And it's interesting because that's what you see with Marlon Lucky not in there quick because Steele comes in and isn't quite as patient as Lucky is. And that was a play that you need to, needed to be patient. Nebraska was pulling an offensive lineman from the left side to lead to be the lead blocker because Steele just got a little bit ahead of himself. Well, they put it on the three yard line, third down and goal from the three. Steel with Lawson in front of him. Inside of five minutes to play. Castillo takes the hit, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Marcus Perry, three stops for the senior from Leewood, Kansas. Now you think they'll kick? I think they're going to go yeah, for it. I don't, I don't think there's any question no. about it. And, and certainly the 84 plus thousand here dressed in red want the same thing. And I guarantee you about 84,000 of them are thinking of 76 as well. I don't know that Coach Callahan is, but the rest of the people in this stadium are. This could make the post-game handshake interesting. Marlon Lucky comes back in, by the way. Yeah, it depends on what you do here, but Marlon Lucky comes back in. Look for him to be figured into the play in some form. Fourth down and goal from the three-yard line. Lucky. Touchdown, Marlon Lucky. Well, Nebraska shouldn't hear a complaint out of Kansas State. You can't get much more basic than that. It was a zone running play to the left side, a hat on a hat, and the guy that got him here today gets the ball into the end zone. 700 yards total offense, wow. over 700 for Nebraska. Again, this is a Kansas State team that gave up 347. You've doubled it. I think there was a lot of pent-up frustration. You think? Here. Yeah. 73 to 24. Marlon Lucky, what a day. Two rushing touchdowns, a receiving touchdown. He's over 100 yards running. And over 75 yards receiving. Five game losing streak and just a few moments ago there's a shot of his dad Mike coming down out of the stands for a hug a moment that they will always remember but look look watch this now. Oh well I've got a second. Sure I'll sign that autograph little guy and there's a pat on the shoulder for a quarterback who has really taken this team on his shoulders and has lifted this crowd of 84,000 back to believing that Nebraska football will be all right under the direction of Joe Gans. That's pretty cool stuff, guys. Yeah, I'll tell you what, when the funny part was his dad couldn't come to one of the games because he had to watch the dogs back in Chicago. And we asked Joe, who's watching the dogs? He said he thinks his sister is this week. So, sister, you hopefully your brother has entertained you this afternoon. Well, you talk about smooth. Joe Gans has been smooth. Our always smooth moment of the game presented by Keystone Light. This was his first touchdown. Now, watch this. Oh, my. I'm all excited, right? Well, the guy has thrown seven touchdowns, and as he keeps going, the reaction gets less and less to it's the point. Yeah, okay, that was good. <laughs> and then Whatever. just another one. Go find an offensive lineman to jump on. Our key yeah, stone he, always smooth he, moment. Of the he game. got increasingly smooth as he threw. Yeah, well, you know, when you have seven times to try it, it gets old hat. Well, you have to go back to 1995 versus Iowa State, the last time Nebraska had 700 plus yards. And against those same Cyclones in 97, the last time Nebraska scored 70 points on an opponent. A lot of history here today, a lot of record breaking. Not for K State. Yeah, how They've got to the, regroup them. Yeah. We saw them last week against Iowa State, and Iowa State just kind of kept them off balance the entire time. No pressure from the Kansas State defense that's known for pressure. And you talk about Kansas State's winning ways, the way that Ron Prince wants to win, win on special teams, have a decided advantage, negative, have defensive pressure, didn't happen, play a clean game penalty-wise. They had quite a few penalties that hurt them today. 
Well, they had seven total for 40 yards, but here's the problem. You still need a game to become bowl eligible. Now, that doesn't guarantee you're going to a bowl. In fact, only the Independence Bowl was here today to watch these two teams play, and that's got to be a first in Nebraska history. But you still have to play Missouri if you're Kansas State at home next week. Missouri battling, of course, for the Big 12 North. Then you have a non-conference game on uh, the 24th against Fresno State. Pat Hill squad always difficult to play at Fresno State. Well, if, if you end up, both teams could end up with six wins, yeah. which qualifies them. But after this shellacking, what is the bowl going to do? Nebraska travels very well. So I think Kansas State needs to win a couple more games. I think they do, too. Johnson had to slip and fall as we close in on three minutes to play in this ball game. I'll tell you what, though, talking around Prince yeah. the last two weeks, this man is going to do an outstanding job at Kansas State. As you mentioned a while back, he's building a program. It's his first head coaching job. Worked with Al Groh at Virginia, who's also having a great year. He understands what it takes. Right now, this team doesn't have any stars. They're just a group of kids that play hard every game. Uh, maybe they need one or two more stars. Jordy Nelson, I would consider a star. He, of course, as Lewis talked about, hasn't played a lot here in the second half, only two receptions. But that's ex that's a great point. When Jordy Nelson could not play, what happened? Josh Freeman wasn't real comfortable, really, with anyone else. I think Freeman certainly has the ability to be a star. Jordy Nelson is going to be gone after this season. So you're right. They have to surround Freeman with some mm -hmm. playmakers. Catches by Tony Purvis. Sticking with running the football. It is Johnson going inside the 20, and he is going to score. Just slips in. James Johnson, the touchdown for Kansas State. 53 yards with 2.19 to play. And that is what the Nebraska faithful has seen today. Guys out of position. At the first level and then missed tackles at the second level and 53 yards later Johnson is standing in the end zone it was kind of deja vu all over again for Nebraska fans and then they looked mm -hmm. up at the scoreboard and said oh you know what we can take a deep breath well you know it's funny they only had 55 yards rushing Kansas State did coming into that 53 yard touchdown run so you're going to look at the stats tomorrow and say, oh, 108-yard rushing, that's not bad. Well, they had one yard at halftime. Extra points good, 219 to play. Ron Prince's squad still playing, 73-31. Well, of course, when you talk Nebraska football, you talk Bob Devaney. You talk Tom Osborne, the hand-picked successor for Bob Devaney. 1994, how about a national championship? Three out of his last four years, he directed a national championship. Nebraska beating Miami. What an outstanding black shirt defense. And he doesn't even flinch when he gets the Gatorade board on him. And then in 1995, they do it again. Another national title. 1997 against Tennessee. Behind Scott Frost, he lifts the trophy again, goes on to serve in Congress, and of course replaced by Frank Solich, who was then replaced by Bill Callahan. And the Back question is, who will be here next year? Well, certainly Tom Osborne's going to have everything to say about that, evaluating the program as we speak, but Nebraska just wants to see good football. And they just know they haven't seen it this year. Uh, I agree. yard line Andre Jones cornerback who's got a lot of kickoff duty well the NHL versus Monday we're in the Eastern Conference where the Southeast Division leading Carolina Hurricanes take on the Florida Panthers then on Tuesday we head to the Western Conference for the Central Division leading Detroit Red Wings take on the St. Louis Blues division collisions it's the NHL on versus Monday and Tuesday night division collisions huh okay. A lot of collisions in, in that sport. I say so. 2-10 to play. Uh, the next versus game for this crew will be December 1st. Cal Stanford, Ted Robinson, Kelly Stauffer, Lewis Johnson will be on hand for that. Then on January 12th, we all go to the Hula Bowl. Bill Davis still in at quarterback. Quentin Castile getting the call. 
73 31 Nebraska with one game remaining on their schedule and it's going to be a tough one. It's uh, two weeks from yesterday on the 23rd they have to play at Colorado. Usually that is a game that might mean something and it will for Bill Callahan. Will they get a chance to be bowl eligible and Dan Hawkins squad I tell you, Cody Hawkins has done a nice job for the Buffaloes this year. Good football team. He's going to be ready for Nebraska but at least this team has a week to enjoy what they've done today. One twenty five to play. Matt Sensky now in a fullback put Castile there and they're going to take a knee and just let this thing run out. The fans want more. Yeah. The fans always want more by the way. But it was the right thing to do. Yes it was. Big 12 football on Versus is brought to you by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And by TomTom. Tom. To learn more, visit TomTom.com. Nebraska 5-6 five on the year. 2-5 in conference play. Kansas State 5-5. Five five. They drop to 3-4 in conference play. Let's go down to Lewis Johnson with our star of the game. All right, thanks a lot. I've got Joe Gans down here celebrating with his team. Joe, what does it mean to you to have led your team to this win, stopping the five-game losing streak on senior day? It means everything, you know. I mean, I just wanted to go out there and play as hard as I could for these seniors and, you know, leave everything on the field for these guys because they've earned it. And, you know, I wanted to send them out right, and I did. You talked about that fire in the belly really competing. Did you see that? Did you feel that today? Yeah, I mean, it was a total di different atmosphere today. It was unbelievable. You know, the seniors came out with great intensity. The crowd was great. And, uh, you know, you just can't say enough about these guys. And, Joe, we talked to your dad during the game. He was so proud. He was almost speechless. We saw the hug. What does it mean to kind of live a, a boy's dream to come here and lead his team to a victory in a big game? It's awesome. You know, it's a dream come true. I've been a Nebraska fan my whole life, you know, even growing up in Chicago. I mean, it's a dream come true just to, you know, come on here and honor the former players that have played here and just put up a performance like this. You know, it means the world to me. And finally, was this an example of Chicago tough? <laughs> I guess. I guess so. All right, Joe right, Gans, Chicago you. tough today, Ron. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Final thoughts, Kelly. Well, if you are patient, good things happen. And Joe Gans was the perfect player at that position for this program today. He was exactly what Nebraska Cornhusker Nation needed to get back on track. It was a happy senior day here in Lincoln, Nebraska.